Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Go Live in Time. That's so late. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's Go Live. Mass Effect has been revealed. Uh, I don't know what these two gents are doing <laughs> with their Mass Effect gear, but it's going to be a lit show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for everyone who just super chat before the show even started, but I'm going to get into those. But before all of that, I hope you've had a lovely week. If you're listening to us on Spotify and Apple and all those places, thank you for joining us. We're going to be very, very busy in this chat. And there's so much to talk about. So I'm going to try and pace this as best as I can. So apologies if you think I'm rushing your super chats. I won't, but there's a lot to talk about. It's going to be a great show. We've got great guests and you have great views and you've got the great Acer who defected from my faction on Dune Spice Wars. How are you doing, dear Acer? I, 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 need to know, I need to know, did you name an agent after me or, or is my name actually included in the game? No, no. I'll tell you how rare this is. Their um, agent just randomly, you got named Acer. Random agent. These aren't... These are yeah, randomly generated okay. names. Okay. Apart from, That's apart how from crazy it is. That happening. Ace is not a common name, unless Thanks. you're a porn star. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Ace is not a common name. <laughs> Cold space. <laughs> um, but yeah, and you defected, you piece of... Although, to be fair, that was on me not to... I didn't manage to do something. You are just, yeah, I can understand why this other digital version of me would do that. I can understand from the relationship that I'm imagining <laughs> is in place there. But for anyone that's like, what the hell's going on that's not in the little Twitter space, Gaz, Gaz has just uh, tweeted, tweeted that uh, he had a character in June Spice Wars named affectionately after me that defected and left him in the lurch. So <laughs> apart from that, everything's fantastic. Like gaming is kicking off. There's loads to talk about. Colt and Gaming Forte here, and it's just going to be a good show. It's going to be a nice, easy conversation. You can give memberships now. You sure can. <laughs> what the hell, Shabs? You're breaking things. What? When? Since when? Since when? Uh, it was in beta last month, and it started rolling out to people over the last week. So everybody oh, doesn't have it wow. yet. That is amazing. Well, done, Shab, Shabs, very nice of you. He's always generous anyway, but. Jeez, that's so cool. How does that uh, work? Who did he gift to? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't tell it, it, it ran so it randomly picks. It doesn't pick it's not like Twitch where it randomly picks somebody. It puts a pool. So uh when you well, first you have to click on the icon where it says gifted. You can't do it on mobile, you have to do it through the mobile browser or on a PC. But when you <laughs> click on the actual <laughs> GIF, yeah, because you know YouTube doesn't know how to you know do mobile phones yet but when you click on the gift it will tell you to turn on gifted members to accept them from the channel and then anytime somebody does one all you have to do is be one of the people that click on it and claim it and then you claim them and it, it, so it's not random it's it's claimed by people that's in the chat oh okay wow that's cool Isla, <laughs> well done for taking it, even though you're more hey. like, help. No, you messed it up, Isla. The first ever gift, and you were like, eh, mine. Well done. No, no, no time. <laughs> it's all good. Um, you can, uh, Shabs, you can extort for money afterwards. But <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you so much for joining us. We have an incredible show. There's so many games to talk about, and we have the perfect panel to talk through these games. Acer, I don't know if that was really an intro. How was your week? My week's been fantastic. I've been I've been spent most of it. It's half term here, so the kids have been off. The Queen's been doing whatever the Queen does, so we're celebrating what did the Queen do? I don't know. We're celebrating the Queen, apparently. My neighbours are we're over by the duck pond having a wonderful time. Um and I've been making lots of thumbnails and doing stuff for YouTube. So good week. Oh. Yeah. That's Queen's Jubilee here. It's a 70th rate. I don't know what it is. That, all that means is we had Thursday and Friday off, which is the reason why I could get the source video out yesterday, because that's all I did for 12 hours. Well, gents, welcome. Both of you are like, you're seasoned on this show. Both of you. Forte, you also. This is what, your third appearance yeah, on the show? I, I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, man, this would be three times. Let's go. Yeah, man. The people love you. Thank you so much for coming back, man. I hope you had a great week and getting oh, saucy. You gave me a reason to leave work early today. That's all. Oh, wicked, man. I was supposed to, be, I was supposed to get off at six o'clock today. I was like, oh, man, this is a reason to go home early. <laughs> yes. 
perfect reason, man. And I hope to get saucy with you in the chat because there's um i saw you i saw you in the twitter space as well everyone's again swimming in the sauce um <laughs> we're gonna get into it it's been an interesting week that's for sure speaking of which your boy dirt's in there is he gonna defect and buy more playstations off you <laughs> shout, out to shout, out, shout out to dirt for making the hour-long trip to the <laughs> store to come get it and, and still say that playstation's dog crap after spending over 800 almost 800 dollars <laughs> and getting one <laughs> Ooh, yeah. are you gonna take that <laughs> I, I don't think i didn't see you like trying to put me off there cold sliding off your chair <laughs> what are you doing last but certainly not least one of my best friends it is colt eastwood wearing a very nice shirt how are you doing man i'm doing well i'm this is uh how many appearances have i been this is maybe five or six <laughs> Yeah, I'm my, more than that. I'm let's sure. say 10 plus, bro. 10 plus. I love, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love well, being here. Uh, this is this is the podcast I aspire to. Oh, I, love, I love this show. I love this show so much. Thank you so much for Cole's, having me here. Cole's been here more than uh, controllers in his background. Well, I mean, it was uh, <laughs> bring the controllers. I, uh, I asked Gaz, I'm like, wait, who's going to be on your show before I say yes? He goes, Fortego. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Set me up for the forte. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, man. Again, that This is where we're going to get saucy. Ideally, maybe we should have had someone who's more PlayStation centric, but forte, I think. Do you, you play on everything, right? You yeah, own I play on everything. Every, yeah, yeah, I own everything. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be a great chat. A gr a great chat. Speaking of chats, I'm going to read through these super chats. They're very generous of you already. Pur Purple Tree Frog, thank you so much for the £2 super chat. Goes, the source restate of play. It's going to be mad. It's going to be, it's good to see you, by the way, Purple Tree Frog. I'm waiting to see what you're going to say. Ooh, I also saw your a membership chat. Thank you for being a member for two months. He goes, can't wait, can't watch live tonight because of work. Ah. Oh. Okay, so I hopefully can watch this tomorrow. Uh, but looking forward to catching up later and see what predictions we have. We are going to get into it. I will tell you the format of the show, maybe briefly, but I'll just speed through them. Drawn TJ with a very generous $10 super check goes, Hi guys, do you think Xbox is going to flop June 12th or will be a banger show? That's going to be the final topic of the show. Um, love the content. Keep it saucy. Oh, by the way, happy birthday, guys. Thank you, Drawn. It wouldn't be a super chat without if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> Dirt Gricky Team, Dirt, thank you, so, thank you again, brother, for the five dollar super chat. He goes, "What's up, fellas? Good to see my homie go gaming forte in the house." That was before he insulted you for being. He a insulted him. You know, he, <laughs> he insulted himself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shout out to Dirt. Shout out to Dirt. Shout out to Dirt. Yeah, shout out to that. Nothing but love. Um, what, Cole? <laughs> uh, thank you, Cole, in the chat for being a member for two months. He says he's been baptized in the source. That was as soon as we we met. That's when you, the baptism occurred. Shabs again with a gifted membership. I think that's insane. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I wonder who grabbed that. Drawn TJ also with a five dollar super check. Sonic Frontiers looks. Okay, as long as they polish it more. That's a great chat. Um, I, I will talk about that. Um, Flame with a five dollar super because you know a PlayStation showcase is really gonna knock it out of the park when the logo for <laughs> Nixon software shows up. They're killing it lately. They are, it was a good show. We're gonna talk about all the games, well, the main ones anyway. Say main ones, but we'll try and speed through uh those games and talk about the games in depth. I think sometimes we on the show don't get a chance to speak about games in as much detail so today is that day we get to get saucy with you in the chat alvin with a five dollar super chat it goes final fantasy 7 remake is coming too many tea leaves which means part two and three would be coming which also means sony probably won't be acquiring square of the show i think this is uh comes from um tim dog saying it no Cole. i think tim was um yeah. Talking about this, mm, which is weird. Tim's Tim been Dogs dropping little hints and little things, mm. little little morsels, yeah. little little niblets. There, he's been dropping it in the in Twitter, and you know he's not really. Um, is he not? He's not a big GR JRPG he's not, player. Oh, I thought you say. I thought you were gonna say he's not a huge insider like you. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we're going to get into that. Uh, and also King Leonidas with a $5 super chicken. Such a great panel today. Thank you. Let's get saucy. I predict Forza 5 DLC shadow dropping on the 12th at the Xbox, Xbox and Bethesda showcase. We'll talk about that at the end. What's actually coming on the Xbox? It's, uh, it's there. We're there. We're going to be there. And Colt's actually going to be there. Uh, the show, you're flying out soon to be there one week yeah flying out uh it's gonna be lit. nervous i'm like be, yeah, nervous he gonna, be, he gonna be on a stage man i'm trying to tell you <laughs> you already recorded <laughs> cold you already recorded some stuff you just can't tell we know you're under india you can't tell us yet we'll see cold gonna be on, on somewhere in that in that video presentation just to let you know <laughs> you should be you should be you will be. i think you should be i think it makes complete one day. sense one day one day, one day called year. june 12th one day when I'm not console warring for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Too late for that. That's not happening. I, I um, have been a, I've been a fair weather fan as far as like sometimes when things are not going so well, I'll stay quiet. And then when things go a different way, I'm like, I'm going to be a little loud and obnoxious. I got to knock it off. But we're having, no, 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 man. We're just, having a good time. We just have fun, man. It's just pieces of plastic and corporations you don't have to worry about hurting feelings. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to get... So very quickly, we'll have to talk about the Fable thing. So Fable thing was trending this week because some piece of shit opened his mouth and made it look like Fable is failing. That piece of shit is me. Uh, I was on the Colt show. The, you're pointing at Asa there, by the way, Colt. No, I'm going around <laughs> Asa. I went like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say thing. It was quite funny. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you weren't frequenting the Twitter space, um well actually it was on articles that did the rounds even though i said don't write articles on this which is such a stupid thing as if anyone would listen talked about the scope of fable perhaps changing because they from from a source of mine was telling me hey look this is what happened and i just said that at three o'clock in the morning it's like oh you know maybe the scope changed then you know a lot of work goes into well i didn't embellish on it so perhaps maybe i was the reason why this all went crazy, but you guys need to relax. It's playground games. If any studio, uh, you know me how critical I am of things. And really playground games is probably going to deliver in my opinion. And I'm not just saying this because of this whole, I don't care, man, what people even, you know, PG think uh, about what I said, but I'll be honest with you. Playground games will probably deliver be the best Halo game ever. If you know what a uh, fable game, Halo game, best fable game <laughs> ever, because well, even that, <laughs> even perhaps, um, because if you know Fable's legacy, in my opinion, Peter Molyneux, I mean, Fable always failed, uh, failed to reach up to its lofty standards. Even though I love Fable one and two, I thought they were brilliant games, but they fell short of what was promised. And now, with the power of the series consoles, the scope of that massively, you know, not massively multiplayer online game, but an RPG, like, uh, open world with playground games, I think, I was hoping, and I'm, maybe they might still show something at the showcase. I think they should still do a flyover if, it, if it's far away from release. But I do think that this game is going to be incredible. Um... But I th but the murmurs like I, I don't even know this hearsay. Do you don't understand that a thousand million pieces? Do you li need to listen to them? But for those who don't know, Amy, I forgot her last name. She's the senior pro uh, producer of Fable. Said, look, this isn't out of the ordinary. We have a massive scope, especially for a game like Fable, and scoping is a necessary part of game development. So don't. W this is just par for the course so yeah that's what i wanted to clarify cult people ran with it on our show sorry if you got it in the neck i don't know if you did um from Actually, based it, on it you didn't that's so weird i was talking to the rdx guys and they're like i got all these dms about what gaz said about fable and i'm like, <laughs> with my good. Phone, like nobody messaged me and you know i sit <laughs> there with you on the show you yeah. and i talked about this for an hour a day or two before the show and everyone's like asking people who have no idea where you're coming from yeah. and um it's an upsetting thing to hear 
that another Xbox studio might be having some difficulties. But when your news broke on uh, Reset Error or whatever had been written about a couple articles on, on the internet, I wrote, breaking news, a game development runs into difficulties. And it's like par for the course. And like what yeah. you said on my show was that they're having difficulty getting all the things in order on Forza Tech Engine. Oh, they which, were. Could be old yeah. info. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I said the word were, right? So, yeah, yeah, um, and you said, you know, it, it's don't write articles about it. It's just something you're hearing. And we'd also heard from other sources, other things about how they were trying to get things figured out. And of course, they're hiring everybody in the studio. So you kind of put two and two together and think, oh, maybe the game's not coming out this year. Maybe it's next year or the year after that. Um, then that senior director of Playground said, this is par for the course. And I yeah. think she, 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 you know, illustrated quite well that it could be frustrating when the teams are all excited because for for Playground, the RPG team, they're all excited. They're building the game. They can't wait till it's their moment to shine. And then everyone is running around saying, the, the house is on fire, the house is on fire. <laughs> Let me say one more thing. A lot of people said, well, this serves them right, giving a racing team an open world RPG. It's like, come on, this studio has been out for four plus years. It's been well documented. It's been well uh, communicated that they built a brand new studio called St. Albans House in the UK. They've got all new people. They've hired all these people in audio and animation, everything. People from yeah. big studios. So it's yeah. not like the guys were like, okay, well, I only know how to make Ferraris turn left and turn to the right, so I'm going to try and make an RPG. Come on. Come on. By the way, your gating is really aggressive. So it's... Oh. Thank you. I'll, yeah, I turned my AC bit. off, so I'll turn it back to normal. <laughs> been around. <laughs> um, yeah, Forte, you probably caught this. Is that better? When do you think does this sound more yeah, natural? It, yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Okay, okay. Definitely. It sounds like Cole Eastwood now. Oh, yes, yes, it, yes, it does. <laughs> Not fading in and out, Cole. Um, Forte, I don't know when the game's coming out. I have no idea. I think it's further ahead. When do you expect it to come out? 2024. 2024. 2024. That's reasonable. The the main reason is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that you went through what you went through because it was kind of crazy. Care, I know you know. I know you don't care, but it was just more <laughs> of a you know a situation where I was like, man, I understand the point, and then I understand where she was coming from through. But I think a lot of people kind of just misunderstand when you talk about playground and fable they it's just like it's like when you think about ea when you think about battlefield you think about dice people don't know there's like a bunch of different versions of dice out there you got stockholm you got montreal you got dice la but they only think of dice as dice yeah. itself just like it's oh, one. With, so just one whole thing but there's multiple studios underneath that umbrella whereas with playground people just because they made a racing game, they just completely ignore the fact that they've been hiring directors of different leads for this game for the last two, three years. And when she said they've been scoping in, I always look at when they say the word scope is them basically trying to get make sure everything stays on track. Like with a game this mm. big, if you go back to just recently about the whole about Starfield and stuff, the developer came out and was talking about how the game was bloated, how it was so much stuff in the game that they felt like they would either have to delay or they would have to cut a lot of the content out to be able to make that release date. That's because yeah. they probably didn't do this process consistently enough throughout the development of the game to get to the point where they could feasibly get that game out without having to delay it. That is part of the way that I looked at the way that she was talking about that. So this is something natural that kind of just happens in general. And they just want to make sure that, hey, let's all have this conversation about what's working, what's not working, so we can move on and make sure that we bring get this game in a playable state so we can showcase it to people like Cole said. They want to have their time to shine because right now it's playground. No one knows who this other studio is until they actually release this game or actually start talking about it. So that has always been kind of the situation I kind of dealt with it in. But this game is so far out. Like, would we love to see something from Fable this year? 
absolutely but it's more likely that you're not going to really hear anything of this until next year because i think the fact that they're still hiring directors i know they have a combat director and everything right now but they're still mm-hmm. actively trying to find people for this position for these different positions inside the company and that just makes us feel like hey we don't know exactly what they're looking for but those things could be monumental parts of the development of the game or they could be mm-hmm. very small parts of it we don't know so I was going to actually mention that point, and it's great. Thank you for reminding me. Asa, they, I've, I don't know, well, one, what's your take of me uh, putting Playgrounds foot in my mouth? I don't understand how that works. But also, the mm-hmm. fact that the careers page, if you look at it, that page, there are some major, they look like lead hires there that I find very odd in this progressed stage of development, if I'm to assume that. What do you think? I, first of all, I need to, to go back to something that Forte said to disagree. Like, right at the beginning, Forte, I need to Good. strongly disagree. You said, sorry to Gaz for any of this. Don't be sorry to Gaz for any of this. He <laughs> loves it. This is, oh. this is, this is oh, Gaz's 15 I, 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 minutes of fame. We've got a week right now where Diablo Immortal oh. launched. Sonic Frontiers has disappointed millions of fans. PlayStation State of Play oh, yeah. like revealed tons of games and all of that. Front and centre, we're prolonging Gaz's 15 minutes of fame, talking about Fable Gate. <laughs> so don't apologise to him, he loves it. He loves every little morsel of attention he can get, don't you, Gaz? Um, I know he does. <laughs> That's why he makes sauce videos, because he loves to <laughs> um, But you're right, though. Like In terms of where Fable is in development, and it, it seems really early on, doesn't it? So the stuff that, that we've been hearing about, um, troubles with port to tech and all the rest of it, it's inevitably going to be quite hard work to to change what is fundamentally a racing engine to make a different type of game. You have to talk to people in the studio to find out why that decision was made, why they want to use port to tech instead of a more open engine, as it were, like Unreal 5 or something along those lines. But it's fine, it's there. Um, they're still recruiting. They've got Fable being a high fantasy game. They're going to want to give it some distance between Avowed and Elder Scrolls 6. I think 2024 is quite a likely target for it, but but we'll see how it goes. They definitely yeah, revealed it very, very early. You, you know what I was thinking about going back to the whole, like you said, so many different high aspects of just development that they're missing when it comes to like the positions and stuff. Part of me, and I'm not using the, the whole pandemic thing about it, but on another part of it, we all know that a lot of people, either they had a job or they didn't, They got government assistance or they didn't because they were working in essential. But you got to think a lot of these developers probably tried to stay put to where they were during this last two years because you don't know what you're walking into when you like like if you're a lead a lead developer or lead combat artist over at naughty dog but you're interested in what playground is doing for fable but you don't know what the situation and working at that studio is at this point because of the whole pandemic thing you don't know what's what, what's the whole situation going to be so you probably are at a situation where you're like maybe i'll wait a while until a lot of this stuff kind of pans itself out before i start making major moves from like a place that I'm comfortable at to somewhere where it's brand new. So I always looked at something like that, like, okay, maybe that might be the reason that they're still hiring from some of these positions because these are positions that just grow on trees. These are positions that people from other studios walk from one studio and go to another studio to help with development on that. And if I was in a situation during the last two years, I'm not going to no, I'm not going to put myself in a position where I won't succeed because I don't know what I'm walking into truly versus what I already have at that point. The last yeah. year has not mm-hmm. been a good situation for people to change jobs. So that yeah. might be the reason why they're going through that. Great point. Great point. That's actually a great point. And maybe, actually, I didn't even think about that. It's probably a reason why. That's actually a great point about talent migration in a time where you know what covid did maybe perhaps that's the reason why we're seeing wholesale uh delays and everywhere so that's a great point um yeah so that's enough about fable it's uh delayed fable hasn't been delayed no it's not been delayed. <laughs> um uh but yeah there you go so hopefully i'm still hoping they show a brief flyover brief flyover at least at 
uh, the showcase event. Show them something, man. I know you've built something. And I have a feeling they'll do a lot of this. Tim Dog did a... Well, we'll talk about the end. We'll talk about the end. Uh, Xbox sh showcase prediction is going to be at the end and it's going to be uh, a big part of the show. Um, the other topic... Um, Colt's looking like a snack, so I'm going to throw him into <laughs> Sonic Frontier. <laughs> Sonic Frontier. Spot and Ghost with a two, two pound super check. Sonic Frontier looks like trash. Sorry, guys. Colt, are you a Sonic fan? No, but I looked at brief gameplay. I thought, oh, that looks fun. But I'm not going to. I don't have any like purist attitude about Sonic. If a game looks fun, mm -hmm. maybe I'll try it out. But I don't know. It looks like um, an old super mario 3d type game i don't know i didn't watch much of it but <laughs> here I, comes ace has got it and um, shout out to uh, ign IGN. got video ign got video footage of of it on their channel and they and it's at 4k but it's at 4k 60 i think but they have it it's actually the source video given to them or sometimes yeah. i wonder about how they put their videos on youtube it's like very clearly a little, the lowest bit rate at 1080p at 30 frames I don't, get, I, I don't get IGN. I couldn't. I, don't get I didn't get to see a nice re representation of this game. It was really low bit rate. Like I'm talking like five megabits, like the lowest you could render something. So super compressed. But I don't know. It's Breath of the Wild with Sonic. What do you want? <laughs> no, I mean, look. The, okay. Um, well, before going to your forte, I just to me, I, the vibe was really good, but it seems like a tech demo. The whole thing constantly, I was like, this is a tech demo. This is something, you know, like one of those guys makes it on Unreal Engine and shares it with someone, like a lone de a guy oh built gosh. it. Oh my gosh. It kind of reminds me of that, but at the same time, it does kind of look good as well. In terms of the mood feels right, but it feels like a very... I'm kind of surprised. It seems really hollow. What did you think, Forte, about the gameplay? No, I agree. I think... If you go back to like think about the movie before after they changed the way Sonic looked, Hell if, yeah. you, if you if yeah after because that was horrendous. But if you go and look <laughs> at the movie, they start you in a familiar space in the movie. Like it's it's based it's 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 still based around what Sonic looks, but you're talking about owls that can talk, things like flying through the air and stuff that you normally wouldn't see. That kind of suspends disbelief, and the environment looks more like it's still like a photorealistic realistic environment, but it looks more like something that could be a Sonic. But then they showed him go through a portal, and then instantly you saw him in the real world, and it didn't feel out of place because they showed the transition of what it was to what it's going to be that's yeah. what it feels like we're missing in this de in this um, beta in this demo it's like yeah. it's like they drop sonic in an ultra realistic photo realistic looking world that he doesn't belong in yeah. so it, so if there's a mechanic where they're saying like he got transported to here then you could be like oh okay that's cool i can see what the, he he's supposed to be out of place but without that type of narrative being spun, it just looks like, hey, we took another game that we were developing and we dropped Sonic in it. And it just doesn't look good at this point. Now, and, and honestly, it doesn't even look fun because he looks super slow because I don't think they found a way to master the open world version of what speed looks like for a Sonic game. Because that's a great he, point. He yeah. could be moving like he could move like the perfect example. If you watch that demo, put YouTube to two times speed. He still looks slow. You can yeah. double the speed of the video and he still looks just as slow because they don't have a way of transferring that belief that he's transferring through a whole open world in a meaningful way. So that's yeah. the thing that kind of throws it out of balance for me. But it could be something, who knows? But I think this was like kind of a hard miss for them on their first reveal of the game. They should have had leaked this. This should have been leaked and say, hey, leak this so we can see what people, uh -huh. uh, what they think about this before we go out and showcase it like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a that's a that's an interesting point. Leak it. Then perhaps people might think, nah, someone created that on Unreal right. Engine. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah, you know, I agree with you on all points there. Asa, what did you think about this? This is a bit of an odd one. <laughs> I worry for everything Sega. I, like, grew up with Sega and want them to make good games. And this ain't it. Um, there's so much about the demo. A lot of people pick up on all the popping and clipping in the environment, and that's like that's a technical issue that you can they can work on. They can polish that. They can hopefully get it performing better nearer to release. But they can't fix the 
the color well they could fix the color palette they could fix the fact that it looks so bland but those are all design like design decisions rather than technical issues and i look at the the world that he's running around in. i was talking on um on thursday on my channel and chris jones said that it reminds him of the the open world that you get to at the end of final fantasy 13 um which was also <laughs> unimpressive but it is it's that color palette and it looks horrid um and it's not that Sonic can't like function and exist in a 3D world. Like the Sonic Adventure games on the Dreamcast were fine. You could you could modernize what they did with that and have a game that might be appealing. But this, before we've even got to like um, how they're going to monetize the title screen, as they are for Sonic Origins, <laughs> it's like it's already not encouraging, and it just I'm, I'm not hopeful for all of the other Sega super impressive mega game projects or whatever they're calling them. <laughs> I don't know what Sacred doing at the yeah. moment. It just doesn't look yeah. good when you have developers and, and, and creators out there making versions of Sonic look better than Sega can make. That's yeah. that's that's the that's the big problem. Like you go look yeah. at some some like Sonic omens and stuff, just look at I mean, even those to the point you can see that they definitely need work, but from a presentation standpoint, they look better than what Sonic is from Sega. It's yeah. like fans understand what Sonic is, and it kind of feels like Sega doesn't. Se Sega just makes a Sonic game, just say, "Oh, we haven't made a Sonic game in five years. Let's make one." Yeah, and see, I think maybe this was just uh, there to get a feeler of it, but you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you, you have to wonder. Like, surely you didn't need fan feedback to understand what the, you know the shortcomings are here. For an open world game like this, Sonic need first of all, you hit the nail on the head. Movement is key. Sonic's main thing is speed. Why is the level not curated to design to, uh, you know, enhance that or facilitate that movement? There should be rails everywhere. There should be everything, bounce pads, everything. There's no enemies in this game, hardly anything. Right. I know it's early, but it's very, very um, just like sparse. And this, the world has seen no thought not just on a visual standpoint from a design perspective there's so many ways in, in terms of gameplay you can leverage sonic's gameplay mechanics not just the legacy games or uh you know like you know, the, the all the abilities funnily enough i've been playing sonic mania on steam deck which is amazing steam deck i just got it this week a lovely con uh, such, such good so much fun but i'll digress but there's so many movements with the bubbles, with a fire shield. You could, there's there are a myriad of games where they can really hone in on to cover the point of traversal. It seems like like a uh, five devs have sat in to make this. So it's a it's a weird one. I want it to be well uh, do well, but let's see how it goes. Um, jury's out there. Still early stages, so hopefully it will uh, improve. Um, before we go into the next topic, thank you so much for the super chats. They've been coming in hard and fast. Onyx, thank you so much for the two dollar super checkers. I predict Sea of Thieves. Oh, Sea of Thieves and Aquaman DLC. What's up, panel? Sea of Thieves. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, Andrew Wilkins with a five dollar super checker. Sup, Forte? Did you make a false prediction yet? How about them twenty mil PS5 sales? Let me know. Uh, let them know PS5. <laughs> PS5 sake faster? I think it meant, meant to say sells faster Sale. more than Xbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, hey, Andrew, like like we said before, we always said it comes down to stock. And PlayStation had a lot of stock in the beginning. But what has happened over the course of the last three months when it comes mm. to PlayStation sales versus Xbox sales? So that's that's always been the narrative. It's always been about who has what. Sony came out and said initially that they were going to have 17 million systems to sell for the first year. They downgraded that to 11 million. So instantly we had our predictions and we were talking about who's going to sell more. I said, well, if PlayStation has stock issues and Xbox doesn't, Xbox is going to sell more systems. And guess what? PlayStation was able to find a bunch of systems that they could sell. And now we're starting to see PlayStation finding their groove and they're getting more systems out into the world so congratulations to the 20 million i wish we knew how many xbox sold but xbox doesn't put out numbers but guess what xbox is doing way better at this point of this generation than they did at any point in the last generation and that's all that truly matters yeah no absolutely cult xbox is still out selling people saying oh but it's the stock shortage surely that's playstation's fault it's not xbox's fault well 
Shoot. People, well, people said that um, PlayStation was going to still outsell Xbox even with stock shortages because they said, well, if PlayStation has stock shortages, Xbox will too. And I'm like, mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Silicon is a worldwide problem, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a, it's not just a stock shortage problem. It's not as simple as that. Um, yeah. PlayStation is not an advantageous customer for AMD as Microsoft and Xbox are. They yeah. provide way more uh volume in chips for the server racks the consoles and microsoft enterprise and cloud and everything that they build uh, some stuff is built on intel but they're a big customer so yeah. when they're just going to supply them first and yeah. playstation is having a problem with with getting enough consoles out but the other strange thing is a lot of people have this skewed perspective about how the xbox versus playstation console push is going right now xbox has no games but you know <laughs> last year was fantastic for xbox 2022 looks like they don't have anything <clears throat> until things get announced still yeah. they are they are selling the xbox consoles like crazy all over the world they're doing really well and of course yes you can find series s's in the store but they don't last forever so yeah. they're making consoles and they're selling them at a time when you don't need a, an Xbox because everything's on PC. You don't need a PC or an Xbox because everything's on cloud. Um, and PlayStation is finally moving that way, which we'll talk about later. So yeah. it's really good. You're in a situation where Switch is killing everybody. PlayStation yep. and Xbox are selling everything they make. And it's super good for anybody that is a gaming fan that cares about this sort of thing. It's yeah. going to be really good. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, absolutely. And that's a good point about what it means for the future health of the industry. A lot of <laughs> fake concern there, which we will touch on later. Shab's inevitable with the two pound super check. Was game Vampire Survivors Survivors is game of the year. He's addicted to the game. I've heard. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, uh, Spiro Music says you mean Microsoft provides more money? No. Like I said, AMD makes more product because Microsoft sells more and makes more money for them so we don't want it, people to get it twisted where they think that xbox says hey how about you know how do these oh yeah, how yeah. these little, little the dollar bills before. look you know have these little george yeah. washington's you know you're gonna make more <laughs> chips for us so it's the other way around amd's like holy crap let's supply microsoft and xbox because what is playstation and sony getting how are they scratching the back of amd they're chips might be going in the sony bravia tvs and then playstation that's it like what else does sony so. have are know. they putting big amd chips in the sony walkman like what do they have <laughs> to bring to the table for the business venture amd is pumping out stuff in the tsmc from the from the chip manufacturer mm -hmm. because microsoft and xbox are a major customer stuff's going out the door they have lots to put in consumers hands and business yeah. hands so it's a big deal so yeah, Absolutely. you don't pay and say, "I oh, mean, I don't think uh, that's not how it goes." I, could I mean, be there wrong. may be a bad Asa, of, like, may, I want to know what Asa thinks. Like, is there like some sort of paid priority to get chips and wafers built in the factory? Uh, <laughs> I was busy looking at what Vampire Survivors was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <we did that. laughs> I've never heard of it, so I was curious. It's, but it um, has is microsoft paying like extra money hey we'll give you a bonus if you if you give you know pump out a bunch of chips for us and don't don't give any to playstation did, yeah no we did talk about it at the time that the rumor that that was happening broke um to a degree they can pay extra and get more chips what they can't do is is diminish the amount of chips that sony have already signed up for so sony will have their agreements in place with amd and microsoft can't say hey We'll double that if you let us have their <laughs> chips. Like, it's not yeah. how it works at all. But anything mm -hmm. new on the table, yeah, they're going to... AMD are perfectly entitled to go where they need to. And then Microsoft obviously have to have to consider competition laws and all the rest of it. They can't literally take up the entire supply chain so that they can't have any competition. But they can't buy out contracts that Sony have with AMD. So Yeah. Um Jeez, what the hell? Um, sorry, I'm just going to keep caught catching up to the Super Chats. Great, great shout, Asa there. That's the end of the discussion. So Microsoft is not paying to deprive Sony of chips. So let's stop saying that. That's just silly. Um, Matt Mardigan, thank you for the $10 Australian. Very generous because waiting patiently for the source. I know I won't be disappointed. Matt, 
the video came out yesterday so do check it out uh, unless you're talking about the next one it just came out yesterday <laughs> but later 9000 thank you for the five dollar super because breaking news it's not gas's birthday today <laughs> thank you hello colt and forte hello acer have a great show hi percolator Game of my choice. Thank you for the five dollars super because at my job we're looking for devs. Some of our teams have been totally replaced because of turnover. Great show. There you go. That that's a good Forte's point. Uh, your point you mentioned earlier about you know uh, staff uh, and jobs in this tumultuous time or oh, previously tumultuous time. I think COVID's the end of. I saw the end of COVID when I went out of Queen's Jubilee. No one's wearing a mask. See of people see of people it's good to it's so good to see that and experience that spartan go 17 thank you for the five pound super because gamers we won't we don't want to see unfinished products proceeds to ask for unfinished gameplay footage welcome aboard the ss double think i don't know which game you're talking about uh unfinished gameplay footage oh you talk about fable like a flyover is not gameplay footage spartan ghost um uh, flame Thank you for the $2 super chat. I blame the Switch for Sonic's presentation. Is it? Is Sonic Frontiers coming out on Switch? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's coming uh, out on Switch. That might actually be a good point. Well, that doesn't... Uh, like, why, that, why that, didn't... that don't mean they need to show the Switch version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, why don't Nintendo's platformers look better? Um, in my opinion. Anyway, it doesn't make any sense. Danny Passion Official, thank you for the $2 super chat. Gaz needs to stop worrying about Xbox Studios. Well, they give me a reason not to worry. I will stop worrying. But as we can all see, is it more than reasonable to be worried? Danny, thank you again for the $2 super because I saw PS5 on a shelf yesterday at a pawn shop. That's it, journalists. Write an article. Playstations are not selling out. They're being pawned off. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me in this day and age. <laughs> Detective Seeds with a ridiculous $50 super chat, man. It goes glitter covered cash for you, Gaz. Ooh, do you, you're making, do I feel like I need to twerk? What the hell, man? This is uh, <laughs> <Please> crazy. <laughs> I just talked I to Detective uh, <laughs> Seeds right before the show. We were in party chat and I messaged Gaz. I go, are we going up in an hour? And he goes, no, in 15 minutes. So yeah, he's a super good dude. We were hanging out and talking about, um, being old, old gamers. How old is he? Oh, no, don't tell us. Uh, yeah, he's probably. I think he's about my age. But we were just talking about how all these all these kids oh. these days, these darn kids. <laughs> these kids yeah. Twitter made me feel like I was old over the course of this last week. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, def- I'm, I'm definitely older now. I was <laughs> tell, like, us, just, tell us, Forte, what, what, what was old. the telltale sign? What happened this week? Uh, Listen, man, I'm just old. <laughs> I can't deal with these people. <laughs> I, was, I went in some spaces and I was like, what are we doing? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm old. Spaces just make you feel I'm like old, the man. race is insane. Uh, <laughs> let, me, listen, let me move on out of here. Put my backpack on that like I never came here. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't go to spaces. Well, one of the reasons why I don't go to that, because that's just... Uh, uh, Lucius Augustus, thank you for the $5 super. She goes, you, only skip, you can only skip the line in TSMC if you pay for the development of the fabs that make the chips like Apple does every few years before. Yeah, uh, so doubling down on what Asus point is. Thank you so much for the super chats. Um, now, PlayStation, the showcase mm. event. That mm. was... A shock or a surprise, pleasant for many. It was good for a multitude really of good. reasons. What a good show! Who expected Sony? Everyone wrote it off. Everyone's expectations were low, but that was really good. Mm-hmm. Thirty minutes, short but sweet. Just bang, 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 bang. It's just really good games. Colt, what did you think of the show? Um, as weird as it sounds to say, it was a really good show for everyone for anyone who is playing because there were a lot of great multi-plat reveals uh which we'll get into as we get into this subject but when i watched the show i thought wow if you're if you're a major gaming fan if you plan on buying a lot or playing a lot of these games that come out we're really have a lot to look forward to and i thought i mean i don't know about like i don't know in the near future what i'm going to be playing on my ps5 except for ragnarok this september but really good stuff coming on 
Switch, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Thanks, Sony, yeah. for putting that show on for us. We liked it. <laughs> it was, and to, to be fair to them, they did pre-announce that it's going to be third-party heavy. Yeah, but mm -hmm, still yeah, but also, I mean, as snarky as as snarky as that sounds, because I really do mean it. Like they really did put on a good show. It was yeah. really we, you and I sat and watched it was with, with uh, Zocker and Hargeet in a party yeah. chat. And we were having a good time. It was really enjoyable. I liked, um, we cut, there was a moment when they were showing the stray game, the cat game where we were kind of like off and never, never land for a moment, which we'll get into that. But it was a really good show. It's like that it was over in 30, 30 minutes. And it was like just the right amount of time for yep. that much info. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was great. Forte, what did you think of the show? That something should Microsoft emulate that format? Oh, man, I ain't trying to tell Microsoft to emulate that. It's hard for Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft need to get these studios together so we can get these games out so we can have games to play. <laughs> Once they do that, then we can talk about the whole presentation around the stuff that they need to do with their Xbox um, showcases and stuff. But, man, I was impressed. I was like, being the person that I have a VR, I had the PSVR right now, and I was really looking forward to seeing what they had in that space. It was really interesting, like like you said, game after game after game. And now it's starting to look like those VR games are like PS4 quality, in, like from the visuals of them. And I was like, this mm. looks really, really, really cool. Uh, the thing that really took it to another level for me, my daughter, she loves Resident Evil. So the fact that she saw Resident Evil 8 in VR, mind blowing for her. I'm hoping that that comes multi-plat to PC when it comes to the Oculus so I don't have to buy a PSVR for just that game alone because she's going to make me do it if it doesn't come to um, Oculus. So well, they I bought timed exclusivity, Sony, to take it away from they, PC. Yeah, I know they did, exactly. So the biggest thing for me is I, I know I'm probably going to end up having to get a PSVR just for that for her. But then she, she said, you ain't tell me they re announced um, the remake of uh, Resident Evil 7. And I was like, oh, my God, my kid is my, I, I, yeah, we have a PlayStation 5 right here. It's great for you. You can play all those games on it. And um, Street Fighter looked amazing. I didn't expect to see Street Fighter there because I thought they were going to save that for Evo. Uh, that looked really, really cool. I like I like how they went back to like the third strike version, the way that it looks inside of the gameplay. I thought that yeah. was really, really cool. Callisto um, Protocol looks amazing. I think it might actually We're gonna, be... we're gonna go go through. Yeah, we'll go them. through the games, but I think in general, I think the show was really, really good. I think I very good. I think for the presentation they put up there, it like like Coach said, it was a perfect amount of information for the time that they put. And as soon as you felt like you were getting like a lull in it, they picked it right back up by saying something like, "Hey, Stray is going to be inside of our subscription service day and day." And then everybody was like, "Oh, that's a good gift for them to get." And I'm like, "Hmm, interesting." I'm going to pay yeah. attention to this over the course of the next couple of months as those games become bigger and bigger and bigger, and people say, "Oh." I guess games day and date in the service are a good thing. <laughs> Source. So, so just to pay, just to paying a little attention to the stuff like that, but it was a really, really good show, and I'm happy that um, I was it. It was it was one of the best that they ever done, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I think it probably was their best show. Um, but we'll go, uh, Asa, just to lead it to you. Um, Resident Evil Four Remake. What did you think? Yeah, that's a game. That's like, <laughs> that's, that's um, the game. It's a yeah, game. It's, you've done that on purpose. You've said like the first time you've mentioned the name of a game, you've gone into me, so I can't bring up the trailer and talk at the same time. But we'll do it. Um, so Resident <laughs> Evil Four. I mean, I really liked Resident Evil Two and Three remakes. So Resident Evil Four remake. You completed those. Yeah, I completed both of those. Um, oh, so I only played it. Resident Evil Four. I've actually I've not played base Resident Evil Four because I didn't really play the Resident Evil series for a while i played like one and two and then oh. i didn't touch horror games for a long time until i started doing it for oh. stream sake so i played through the entirety of two remake and three remake um the only thing that i don't like about resident evil 4 remake is the little snippet at the end that says vr content is also being worked on mm. i don't want vr content i want you to give me the game i don't want another era of like here's resident evil 4 and also you can look around Lara Croft's mansion for five minutes or whatever, like the, the kind of weird <laughs> PSVR era. Right, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah I don't that want that. Give me, give me the whole game or zip it. Um, 
yeah. which obviously they're doing for Resident Evil 8, and that looks absolutely phenomenal, by the way. I'm sure we'll come on to, to 8 soon. But 4, I mean, it could literally, it could be contractual obligations because you can play Resident Evil 4 VR on the Oculus Quest at the moment. So it could be that they're not allowed to do it for anybody else for a while. Yeah, but right. that was the only like small concern that I had on on that. Besides that, for for those of you that that love your pancake games, I'm sure it's going to be another high quality, <laughs> high quality remake like yeah. the other two were. So, right, definitely, it does look visually uh, sound. What did you think, Cole? Are you a Resident Evil fan? And did you play four? No, no, I didn't get into Resident Evil till like uh, f several years ago. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I didn't play those back in the day, so I don't know. Uh, they're creepy. I played seven, a little bit of seven. I played a lot of eight, and I played all of Resident Evil 2. Don't, t don't tell me six was your first one. Nope. No, I've never even played it. No, okay, Resident good. Evil is something I missed. Yeah, it was. Um, good. Yeah, good. I haven't played them. Missed that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. No, Resident Evil 2 was mine, but this this does look good. It does uh, it does need a little bit more gameplay. So there's not much you can talk about Resident Evil there until, but it's good that it's coming. It's coming to Xbox. Oh, we were Peace. we were talking to someone that about how how trash that Resident Evil remake and how it didn't look next gen. I'm like, oh, that oh, conversation God. gets so old yeah, to me. I'm so does. sick of people looking at something and just thinking. Oh, you know, they didn't make that look next gen. It's like, oh my gosh, you can't even tie your own shoes. Like, you don't know how to make stuff like this. That drives me crazy. Well, what what do we think about so they're going from three to four, but they skipped over Veronica. What do we think about what, like anybody that uh, played Cole Veronica, what do you think about that? I don't Veronica is a beautiful game. I love that. Right. I, mean, I think I played I it on Dreamcast. Yeah, um, Dreamcast. But <sighs> I don't know. I mean, that would be an easier remake to do. It would be more warranted than this one, in my opinion, because this mm -hmm. one had that over-shoulder formula anyway, whereas Code Veronica is probably more... It requires more work. It would be more... To me, it would be more... It would be better. Actually, that's a great point. I think Veronica would make sense to have a remake because there's some value in it, whereas this is going to be a spruced-up visuals. It's going to be less of a jump up like Resident Evil 2 and 3 were because they were old, you know, fixed camera yep. angle things, uh, whereas Code Veronica was similar. So, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. But it was like uh, Flash Gordon says, a spin-off. But it was a, just because it was a spin-off. It was a fully fledged game. A fully fledged uh, game. Yeah, and, and a lot of people, not saying that we did want four, because a lot of people did want to get a, a, a reimagination of four. I just thought that Veronica would have been one that a lot of people did like that could that you could benefit from that upgrade that one and two, well, two and three got. Yeah, definitely. I, that's a great point, actually. In terms of like four versus Veronica, I would go and for veronica now shout out to 412 people watching smash that like button if you're enjoying the chat we're gonna go through a lot here uh let's talk about psvr2 before we talk about those games asa were you impressed by it because forte you mentioned that the games are starting to look ps4 fidelity in terms of visuals hopefully psvr2 which sounds like impressive in specs can deliver that vr punch but asa i'm gonna be loaded here i still think the games from what we were shown look a little bit meh gimmicky i don't know like we had walking dead saints and sinners we had no man's sky which looks like i really like to try and resident evil and then horizon call of the mountain so, <sighs> there's not too many of those that i would class as gimmicky so call of the mountain definitely has a big emphasis on moving with your hands that that much the trailer yeah. showed for good reason if you've mm -hmm. used vr then then movement can be a bit challenging um yeah. resident evil 8 looked absolutely phenomenal i will say you have to say everything that they show is like a ball shot effectively you can't show vr on a pancake screen at the best yeah. of times but playstation vr 2 uses foveated rendering so if you're seeing a full clear image it's not real it's, it's not real that's not what the playstation is rendering um and you can forgive oh, okay. them because you can't show someone like a little blurred mess so you can forgive them for faking it but it is fake yeah um what really impressed me was the the resident evil 8 one the interactions they do things like the, the throwing a gun from right hand to left and smashing the environment yeah. with the weapon and things like that that's the kind of interactivity that the first generation playstation vr lacked because it was centered around using a controller 
VR yeah. is massively different when you're using your hands and when things are more intuitive. So that yeah. looked really good to me. The other games that they showed, No Man's Sky looked surprisingly impressive. It's been around for a while. There's a lot of content in there now. It's already a VR game on other platforms. So you can jump into that mm -hmm. today and do it. But what they showed there was like, before they said No Man's Sky, I was like, whoa, this looks really good. What is it? Oh, it's No Man's Sky again. Okay. They've, they've added a lot to No Man's Sky. And Saints and Sinners yeah. Retribution, the first walking dead game is so much fun it's so much fun so that one yeah. visually was less impressive than resident evil but i know from the first version of the game that that's going to be incredible to play so i mean vr is going to live live and die by having content because it's at that stage in its life where you can see from our chat a lot of people don't care and don't like it and it's a hard yeah. ask for developers to invest in putting those games out there but if nobody does, then it will never gain any traction. So hopefully Sony no. are serious about it and they're going to keep bringing games of this kind of caliber. But I don't think, like the four games they've shown here, I don't think it's off to a bad start at all. So happy for me. Yeah. Uh. No, absolutely. I, I, I don't want to sound dismissive. I really respect PlayStation for pushing on, pressing on with PSVR 2. That's for me, I, I, I will always say that the Zen of gaming is VR. Um, and I really respect them taking the risk there because that's the case. Like that they are taking a risk with spiraling dev costs, with perhaps uh maybe mm, oh, apathy uh for VR in general, not just in our chat, but perhaps in the mass audience. Uh Colt, are you a PS V like are you a VR fan? Would you are you realistically going to get a PSVR 2? <laughs> no, no, no way. No way. Um, we need people to buy VR to help push the technology forward and get it bigger yeah. and more popular. And not everybody's going to love, like, being, I'm not always going to give it a fair shake, I guess. I've tried it, but um, some of the, there's a reason why I play the regular mainstream games because of that experience I get on a controller like so yeah. some of the games like they're they're getting there like looking at this footage like the floating hands like i don't understand why developers don't just animate the shoulder down to the fingertips like i don't know that why that's a that. thing huh? it's because that? it's because it's very difficult for them to actually track where your real arms are and as soon as there's a disconnect between what it's doing in the game so it's inverse kinematics they call it um they can figure uh -huh. out from the position of your hand and your head where your arm's supposed to be. But if they get oh, okay. it wrong, it can be a bit disconcerting. Sure. So a lot yeah. of them are for hands VR for that reason. games did do that, didn't they? Robo Recall, when I played at your house, you could see the arm. Some do, and some do it very well. And I'm playing, so I play Skyrim a lot at the moment, and I've got a mod that adds that in there. So Skyrim was floating hands as well. But Skyrim is a game where you get all kinds of armor and weird things, and it's just cool to look down and see your orc belly running around so yeah that would be cool that would be cool <laughs> oh, but um i don't know uh i would be curious to see what ace's answer is because i feel like vr is still five to ten years off until it can become mainstream and as fluid and connected to what we play conventionally because right now they have to kind of they have to guide you through and let you do things but there are some games that are better than some of the games that i probably play like half life alex is amazing so the, but those are just outliers they're very few and far between but no I'm, thing. Just, I'm not no no i, I don't think it's very fair comment like the big you know must have vr game the killer app here's half life here's my alex. take here instead of saying all that stuff i did which i know that while i'm talking ace is thinking well because Ace has way more experience, and I'm just speaking from, I don't like it. I would rather have a couple of projectors where you can get a, go into a room, have your gaming room set up where you have two projectors that fill your wall and your sidewalls with the game world. Or uh, just this, this, would be, this would be VR for me. You put on your VR headset, and you grab your DualSense 5 or your Xbox controller, and you play every game with, instead of using the uh right thumbstick to move your head around that well, right thumbstick is disabled and you move your head around and you still oh. use this thumb to walk forward walk back 
and all that, but you're looking and you're aiming uh, with, this hurts with me, the thumbstick. Cole. Your your dream for VR, you for, for VR is PlayStation VR Gen One. <laughs> My dream for VR is to put on a headset and play all of your favorite games that wow. are in third or first person, mm -hmm. with being able to look around with your head and see it all in three D, all in motion, because that's what the big. Dr I mean, what is the big draw of VR, chat and audience? Is it is it the interaction with your hands? Or is it being able to be feel like you're inside the world and you're looking around? When, it? When's the last time you tried a VR coat? Um, two years ago. Two years ago. Which VR was it? Um, Samsung cardboard. No, 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 no. no, <laughs> no. Say, it was at the Microsoft store. It was uh, it was a pretty pricey one on a PC. Okay, I don't uh, remember HP what it was. Or yeah, yeah, I think it was Vive. Yeah. I stopped following the the VR stuff about five years ago when there was a there was a group called um, V. I can't remember what they were called. There was a group that was selling a third party PlayStation controller and a third party Xbox controller and a headset, and it disabled the looking thumbstick, and your head tracking was translated. And you could load up almost every game in this. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. View VR. I did a video on it a long time ago. Yeah. It never went anywhere. It was on. It was on crowdfunding, and I thought this is going to be a big deal. And I must have d died, and no one wanted it. I thought, how great would it be to load up every first-person shooter in your catalog, and flip yeah. the switch? You flip the switch to disable the thumbstick for looking. Head tracking is all of your looking, and you could just play all your games in, in your VR headset. Yeah, even on console, yeah. and it never yeah. went anywhere. Yeah. And uh, Hoggy Chani, thank you for. I'll read all the, the super chats because this is relevant. Thank you for being a member for a year. I don't know that, Hoggy. Shout out to you. Because uh, I think VR is a fad, but AR could uh, have potential down the road. By the time AR will be useful, the processing will be in the glasses. What do you think, Forte? Are you a VR fan? Do people buy a lot of VR headsets in your experience? I mean, it's still niche because it's not widely adopted, but will we. I'll put it like this. People that try VR, either most of them, 90% of them love it. It all comes down, can you actually tolerate it though? Is it something, yeah. you, is it something you can, like even for me, 45 minutes to an hour, maybe if I'm really engrossed into it, I can get up to two hours before I have to put it down because I, I don't have a problem with it, but it's just more of like, I got to disconnect because you got to come back to reality, um, it mm -hmm. feels like because you can get really sucked into those worlds when you had that headset on. Um, but for me, yeah, most people that buy it, they love it. They experience. I have people that literally sell VR to their friends and they'll come up to the store and make sure they get one. Um, yeah. And it was like very noticeable over the course of probably a year and a half where PlayStation really wasn't making a lot of VRs where people were looking for them and they couldn't find them. And they were going for like, $150 more, like $450 online, like eBay and stuff like that, because Sony wasn't producing them. Now they're starting to make them a little bit more now with the um, occurrence of the newer PSVR 2 coming out. The thing that excited me the most, and I think VR is very situational to people, I love the aerial parts of VR. So when I saw No Man's Sky, even though it is something I know you could do on PC already, I instantly fell in love. I was like, yeah. I have, I have to do this because I bought my PSVR for Ace Combat. I bought it for that. Yeah. I I I, I, I play Star Wars World Squadron on my PSVR. Oh. It's truly incredible. I just like the whole aspect of flying in a cockpit and seeing all the way around you, no matter what. And the yeah. one, and the one game I truly wish had it was Microsoft Flight Sim. I wish oh, I, could, man. I wish I could boot up Microsoft Flight Sim you can. with an Oculus. Can you? Can you do it on Quest? If you got okay. the, not 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 native on Quest, so if you got a PC that can well, run Quest, have, yeah, you gotta yeah, you gotta have the the data link cable to hook it up to your PC. You can do it okay, well, I, oh, you can. Okay, well, I'll mm -hmm. thank you, Ace. I will be doing that, but. That's what sucks me into VR. My daughter, on the other hand, she doesn't like stuff like that, but she'll play Resident Evil in VR. She'll play a scary game that I would never put a headset on to play in VR. So I think it just comes down she's to the braver part. than me. She's braver than most she's braver than most people. But <laughs> I think it ultimately comes down to finding a game for that one individual 
that or not even a game a genre of games that they could seek themselves into to feel like i'm not just buying it for one game i'm buying it for a platform a multitude of different games that fall in this genre that sony has done you know not sony but yeah. third parties have done a good job and basically making sure they keep releasing games like that once we get to that point then it becomes more stable it's just very on and off when it comes to the development of games for people that they like a lot yeah no absolutely but i hope something does stick i hope that kind of they do hit that stride with those games that would be brilliant and you know i i did buy rogue squadron with a view of playing on vr and i haven't done that i've got oculus quest i need to figure that out um and also half-life alex i haven't played it yet but yeah like shout out to uh, sony let's see what this headset it's supposed to be very impressive acer you're excited about it that makes me excited for it so yeah shout out to 430 people in the chat smash that like button <laughs> you've influenced someone to change their name dick wingbat with a one pound 79 stoop <laughs> check Thank you, Asa, for my new name. Happy birthday, Gaz. I wonder who that is previously. <laughs> they call him Dick Wingbat. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, <laughs> Danny Passion Official, thank you for the two dollars super. She goes, check your t Twitter DM source. And he DM'd me a picture of that PS5 on sale with a really battered box for $640. Uh, even that battered looks like it's selling quite for quite a bit. Undisputed nerd, thank you so much for the $10 super. She goes, he goes, is there a future where Microsoft buys Warner, Discover, and moves into the TV movie industry like Apple, Game Pass, Max with HBO? Yes, please. That sounds like horribleness to me. What do you think, Cole? <laughs> do you think they should? Will they? Uh, I don't think. I don't know. Uh, like, uh, we're all wondering if the Activision Blizzard thing is going to wrap by the end of the year or early spring. So um, it's funny to watch all these uh, platforms that are running after their own IPs or their own, you know, soon to be IPs to bolster up their services. Yeah. Oh my gosh, services. It's so crazy. Uh, there's a lot to talk about with that because a lot of uh, these, a lot of PlayStation is really vying hard to get new content on the platform, and it is a little bit cloudy where PlayStation is sitting first party wise in the next two years outside of Ragnarok, Wolverine, Spider Man 2. And, and, Definitely. I can see how that kind of uh, at a first glance, right? So it is interesting that if you look at Xbox, you're like, where are their games? Yeah, but we know there's like tw 12 or 15 of them coming in the next two years. Mm -hmm. But yeah. with PlayStation, it's like um, two or three major first party games that we know of. A lot yeah. of surprises to come for sure. Absolutely. That's the thing that excites me um, on Sony and Microsoft side. JD up at the $5 super chat. Goes, Speaking of Resident Evil, we need a director's cut of Resident Evil 3. The original uh, game cut too much content. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, I haven't played that. I played Resident Evil uh, 2, the remake, but I need to go back onto it. Adam MC, thank you for the £2 super show. Colt, why are you asking for feet pics, brah? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot. Um, no, I meant I was going to send you my feet pics. So, yeah, that was. I mean, that's standard fare, right? Yeah. So I'm always trying to get those out to the internet as soon as possible. I'm like, hey, feet pics over here. We got feet pics. Is there a pedicure like involved with that before you do it? There is always. Well, I mean, some of the pics are while I'm getting the pedicure. Oh, yeah, they're nice. They're real. You can nice. sell that for a lot. And got only those, got those, got those um, model feet. <laughs> the model fee. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Grumble, grumble with the two dollars super because I'm an Xbox guy, but Stray might get me on to PS5. Stray looked great. The gameplay looked fun. We need to see a little bit more of that. We're gonna get into it a little bit more, and then finally, Hoggy Chani, thank you for the five dollars super because I asked this on KY's podcast. If you were Phil and had to choose between VR and Series S. Which would you go for? PS went with PSVR too. Uh, yeah, definitely. Series, uh, weird series comparison. S. S. Series S for sure. That's, that's not a choice that Phil had to make though. And the choice that yeah. he has made is not to put Forza Horizon onto PC VR. So he needs to step down <laughs> and make way for someone yeah, that's going to make it. <laughs> that should be on VR, man. Can yeah. you imagine that game in VR? Absolutely. <laughs> that needs to be in VR. I, just, I almost I feel like, I almost feel like Xbox or 
I almost feel like the Xbox team doesn't want VR to thrive or something. No, nah, because if you're looking at Microsoft case. Flight Sim doesn't have it, and it does. Forza so, Horizon yeah. doesn't have it, and they just don't. They don't even want to support. They've got the best console where all they have to do is just say, "Hey, we're going to partner with a couple of these VR headsets and make them compatible." They don't even want to get near it. And I know that Phil says that it's not there. It has to be more powerful. It has to be untethered. And VR is going to take a while before, you know, that mainstream feel I, is in VR. But so for me, I like super when I look at, yeah, when I look at it, I, I can understand. I can absolutely understand them not putting VR on the Xbox. And to an extent, I agree. Like the Xbox isn't ready for it. Um, right. But... At the same time, he's always come out publicly and said, we're seeing how it goes in the PC space. And for me, Phil yeah. Spencer is actively holding back the, the PC space. Actively Why? holding Why? it back. Explain because that. he's not put... What have they Forza seen Horizon on PC? Should, but they don't see anything, clearly. Like, Forza Horizon should be <laughs> VR on the PC. There's plenty of headroom on a lot of graphics cards to do that already, and the game is made for it. They've also acquired Bethesda, mm -hmm. Ninja Theory, and In Exile, who were pretty prominent VR developers. And said you're not doing VR anymore. So, in that regard, whether it's their intention or not, I consider them actively holding it back because they're stopping development in that space. And that's not to I say agree. like that's not to say that they're being idiots and they're getting it all wrong because there's a lot of sense, no. business sense, to to go in where the money is. But it's also a bit of a shame. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I respect PlayStation there because they are going taking a punt at it because that's driven not merely by profits you know we talk about sony being really cutthroat and chasing them dollar and obviously psvr 2 is designed to make them money that's business but there's still a lot of vision there um and i don't know my, on microsoft side it's not even just vision it's not even accommodating games where there is massive utility so i don't i don't like Xbox to sit back and wait, although I understand it. They have to get their house in order, get their first party teams working, getting all of that sorted, then they can do it. So I don't want to, I, I would be in a situation where I'm like, oh, they're doing PSVR and they're neglecting their studios. I can't have it both ways. So realistically, th I understand. I just think they have a lot of money. I'll throw, I'll throw the final wrench in the gear and Whoa. I love you, Asa. I don't want to, I don't want to hurt you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> VR is not maybe i'm wrong but i think vr is like people say in the chat like it's niche i think in the grand scheme of things vr is a very very small portion of the pie of money to be made and for playstation they sold to 2.5 percent of their user base with the psvr and That's i'm sure why... they would think in this in this coming future that will probably push to five percent of the ps5 owners will get psvr but... maybe it'll be higher or maybe it was 4%. I think it was 4%. So maybe they're looking to push higher and maybe get a tenth of the people. And it's good money. Maybe right. it's just not... Maybe that there's not a lot of money to be made there enough to warrant... I know that Phil also said they don't want to... They've already got the freaking darn dashboard left alone from last generation. They got things to mostly work. DVR's crap. <laughs> you, try to throw, you try to throw in and out of VR headset in that operating system and they got their team has a whole nother set of problems yeah, maybe yeah. he just knows their team would just like hey feels like hey what about bringing vr and like, we can't do it we can hardly even keep the games running on the you know? <laughs> so so i i think the i think the thing that aces is, is saying and i agree with is not that they should make it but there are so many other headsets out there that they could partner with, especially on a PC mm -hmm. platform, because I don't think Xbox itself is ready to have VR. The system itself, the ecosystem yeah. is, not, is not ready for yeah. it. But the fact that all of these games are available on a platform like PC that has a myriad of different headset options, that should be the focus when it comes to at least latching on to that market because in the PC space. Yeah, Absolutely. because I see I sell like I sell a lot of Oculus. A lot yeah. of it. Like yeah. I'll get mm -hmm. a, I'll get 15, 20 of them in in a week. And by the end of the week, they're gone. And I'm consistent. Oh, okay. And I'm consistently getting them. So it's not like it's it's not it is still a niche thing. We you will never see a headset like a VR headset sell like a PlayStation 5 or even an Xbox mm -hmm. Series S or X because that for market for now, that market is still very, very small, but that market is it's still valuable. 
in the fact that uh, PlayStation is making their own dedicated headset to that market for their headset, even if they sell the five percent of their base. That yeah. is that is a good that that that's the one thing that we always say about Xbox that the difference between Xbox and PlayStation. PlayStation is willing to go to the niches part of their market and show value to them because hey, we got variety on our platform. We're not about just yeah. open, we're not just about this one thing. Where Xbox for the longest it was just about shooters and stuff, and everybody yeah. like, well, where's the diversity? Where's the RPGs and stuff like that? And we're starting to see Xbox move in that direction, but PlayStation still does it, and I feel like VR is that main thing that they're saying. Yeah, this is not making us as much money as we probably wanted to, but it's, it gives people an option, and that's why people pick our platform because of it. Yeah, no, th- I think definitely that that's a great point about variety. There is a point they have a vision, they're pushing that forward. And I respect, I have a lot of respect for PlayStation for pushing VR forward. And But the proof will be in pudding whether or not they do it justice and the games do it justice. But for now, for now, it's pancake games, no matter how much Acer begrudges pancakes. What is the pancake games thing? Yeah, just normal games, not non VR, like flat. Oh, he needs just flat 2D? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. a jerk. Yeah. You, you're you so mean to us, flat, us Flatlanders. Hey, who doesn't like pancakes, Cole? Who doesn't like pancakes? Don't be a mean. <laughs> You're an anti-flatlander, is what you are, Mr. Oh, yeah. man. Can I at least put? Can I at least? Can I at least put syrup on those pancakes, man? Absolutely, you for can. like a certain price. Oh. <laughs> Over here, sometimes Talking you about- put Nutella and peanut butter on pancakes. All right. <laughs> I tell you a game that has Nutella, peanut butter, and syrup. It's Ooh. this game that took everyone by surprise. Callisto Protocol is doing Callisto what Flockhart. People... <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> so it's kind of like you said. I'm sorry. Like your 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 intro and segue is amazing. Please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I told you you interrupted it. Um, <laughs> Cole, this is a next gen only game and it looks like a next gen only game i think it please tell me it's the next gen only game because no home- uh, Wait, is this the- <laughs> oh, I'm, tr- I'm trying to remember i'm trying to remember maybe it was street fighter that said ps4 ps5 i think this is next gen only but we'll find out in a moment but keep i'm going. pretty sure this is next gen only i think it is i'll be very surprised well i think they announced anyway- it as next gen only and changed that recently to say actually Oh, really? Oh, okay. Mm. Well, either way, it looks sick. This game is basically the spiritual successor to Dead Space. Holy, this uh, game of the show for me. because Is this I was the same like, developer that left Dead Space? It's called Striking Distance Studios, and I have no idea what they've made. Are they new studio? Do we know, chat? I don't I'll know. I should have done some research into it before the show, but I've, I mean, forget this. Well, don't forget the studio. Yeah, they're the ones it is, great. It is. Look at this game. It is. It's mm-hmm. from, it says from the veteran Call of Duty and uh, Dead Space, Glenn Schofield. Oh. So yeah, you're getting, you're getting a gritty Dead Space type. Oh, like you're getting the next generation Dead Space, basically. Yeah. Oh, it this looks amazing. Like the art style, the visuals look insane. The the oh, best oh was uh, in your sauce oh. video when you were highlighting a guy that was throwing a fit about uh, <laughs> PlayStation on PC, which we'll get in later. He was missing this amazing trailer because he was like, wait. No, hold on. It's going to be okay. No, it's not going to be okay. No, yes. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Lucas just crying about yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, I don't want to jump the shark game. on on what you and Ace have to talk about, but Callisto Protocol looks really cool. Yes. Forte. And it's coming day one. December, when is it coming? 2023? December 2nd. No, December 2022. December what? 2nd this year. Yeah, the, yeah December this 2nd year. this year. Yeah. This year. <sighs> what a good looking game, man. That looks impressive that hey so you on you are you played evil uh evil within quite a bit did you like the dead space games i've not played dead space i played, oh, like, played so dead when we were talking about no when we were talking about um, resident evil games earlier <laughs> no. and funnily enough like i said before we got onto code veronica pretty much the last horror game that i played before i stopped them was code veronica then i didn't play a horror game for years and years and years until i started streaming and uh. then i went through 
Resident Evil games, Evil Within and things like that. But I have not played Dead Space. But Callisto Protocol looks looks good. It looks like the kind of horror that you get in the Evil Within. Obviously, I should be saying it looks like the kind of horror you get within Dead Space, but having not played it, yeah, it's got it's got Evil well, Within vibes for me. It looks fun. <laughs> You're lucky because you can. If I were you, well, play this first, then the Dead Space remake, which is being made, play that. Don't play the old ones. Although the old ones are still great. What about you, Forte? Are you a Dead Space fan? Man, I love Dead Space. De- 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 Dead Space 3 was the only one that threw me off because I didn't like the whole co op aspect of it, how they had it implemented. But 1 and 2, mm. oh my God. Dude, whew, it was just all over the place. Uh, getting that achievement, three, three saves, and having the beat the whole game only saving three times oh, you did it wow oh, no dude no I, I got all the way to i got all the way to it was 16 chapters i got to chapter 14 and i had my last save at chapter 13 and i died no i take that back i had my last save at chapter 11 and like the difference between chapter 11 and chapter 16 was like five hours or six hours and I refuse to go back and do it again. <laughs> but, so I just beat the game normally. But dude, it's so it's so great seeing this game. Like literally gave me those vibes. I was like, "Yo, this looks like an even eerier, ultra yeah. realistic version of what we saw in Dead Space." But it scares me more because the thing about Dead Space, you can see, like you know graphic fidelity. It for the time, it looked really really scary. Yeah. But mm-hmm. now you're getting to the point where it's like, yo, this like uh, th- the ambience in the environments look so realistic. Going around a corner will I-, I might be playing the game and have to put the controller down and walk away. I never had to do that <laughs> in dead space. But in this game, it looks like I will have to do that. But I'm really interested in it. It was like the surprise of the show for me outside of one thing that we'll probably talk about later. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, that I think that shocked, uh, pleasantly surprised everyone. And that's a good point about the visual fidelity and what Dead Space was creepy at the time. Those limbs and the way they designed those enemies were, you know, great. But this has a tonally different, more even more creepier look with the mm-hmm. way they've imbued human designs with the freaks a little bit more human, which makes it even more creepy because they're still that transition phase where it's really creepy. You can still see the human form factor, whereas with Dead Space, they were so grotesque at the end of it. It's really the face that was the only discerning exactly, human yeah. quality of the enemy. So this looks amazing, and I can't and I can't wait to play it. Knowing now, and thanks to you uh, and chat telling me that this the X... Ex- uh, Dead Space devs, very excited to see what they do here. Although, if you're the ex, uh, the Dead Space remake guys, you're probably working on it like you bastards. How yeah, and this comes you? out, and this that's the thing that sucks about it because this comes out before that. Yeah, that's gonna take the win for the sales. Yeah, the yeah, remake. they will because now when you play, I mean, I'm gonna love it because I remember like what Dead Space One was, but I almost wish that this game came out after dead space so i could be like yo this is what the dead space remake feels like but this game made by the people that did the original remastered in their own environment with a new game is a whole other level yeah. now we're going to get that experience first and it's probably going to taint a little bit of people's thoughts Definitely. of the original one unfortunately it has for me it has for me you're right it has for me because like that's new it's creepier it's better it's more modern but right. potentially better potentially uh, we don't know yeah but cult remember dead space how for me the sound design was insane that's what killed it for me it was just like i can hear these whispers and i was so scared as a grown man to go through the next room like it's just like what is that <laughs> what is that it's so scary through and through um, when is the but, Dead Space remake uh, releasing? June 25th, I believe. J- not June, January 25th. January. Oh, so oh, they let push that early. That's oh, true. yeah, it would be better if it was afterward. Then you get this spiritual successor thing going on. Mm. Yeah. But then yeah. again, uh, you'll get to see Dead Space in all its glory and then move on to the true next generation you know, successor. So, yeah, I guess that could work out. Either way, I think it'll be good. I, 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 I can see a lot of a lot of us whine and complain on on either side or on all sides about 
what games aren't coming or what what's not being released or how long you have to wait but when you really take a step back especially after this little state of play it's like there are a lot of great games coming out on these platforms and uh we're going to be very very busy very very busy yeah. playing a lot of different cool games and of course we we forget about multi-plats through and through all the time and uh, i didn't give two craps about sniper elite five and then i played it and i think mm -hmm. i was like five minutes into it i'm like well, this is really really good and so i That's had so a great play, two weeks of that game i mean i've blasted through it non-stop so oh man me you forte dealer we've all played it together it was fun it was okay yeah. all of us did play it it was, it was a lot a lot of fun ace has got uh dead space up um although it's a lot of fade to blacks and that it's just dark but now we get to see you know some of that design it still look the remake visually is actually really impressive uh, i now get it's very curated possibly um four shots but no uh, we've seen engine in engine gameplay of that so very impressive looking game probably my game of the show but yeah let's see what it not, not scary <laughs> though not compared to like skyrim vr i was playing skyrim vr the other day and a dragon flew over <laughs> and i just got paralyzed and pissed myself and then jumped off a cliff didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all the, oh all the my wind, god! All, all the wind flew over the top of you, and you was like, "It's over." <laughs> <laughs> I had like one hour <laughs> left, and no way to defend myself. So yeah, <laughs> just froze. Like, oh no! Hey, nothing I didn't didn't notice while Forte was talking. You managed to sneak in a, a little clip of you hitting someone with a block of cheese, and then <laughs> fade back out to Forte. I was like, <laughs> "What do you do on VR? It's so funny, man." Uh, but yeah. I'm glad Callisto Protocol's not on VR. And not that I would play anyway. Um, now, Street Fighter 6. Finally, we get to see gameplay. It looks impressive to me. I'm a big fighting guy, uh, fighting game fan. Uh, although I haven't played 5 because it was on PlayStation. Although I tend to... Don't ask me why. I, I play online a lot. And mm -hmm. PlayStation for me, even the PS4, I just didn't like the environment. So I didn't, I'd ne I fell off on four, uh, five. Although the gameplay looks a bit a chunky, I have played it, but I didn't play it as much. But Street Fighter Six looks sick, like Third Strike. Good shout there. It just feels like that, the same kind of vibe. It's also multi platform. What do you think, Forte? You're Street Fighter guy? Did I am a Street Fighter guy. I love Street, and I was just like you. I really didn't play. I just didn't. I mean, even though, and I feel like in some ways, the PlayStation Four controller was better for fighting games than the Xbox controller was. So, I, I just didn't. For some reason, I just didn't gravitate to play it over there. But I really haven't been super excited for fighting games that much at all on consoles because I've always been an arcade person. It's like okay. I, I miss the arc that when it came to fighting games. The one thing I feel like we lost is that that back and forth. Like unless you're yeah. on, even when you're in a party chat with somebody beating the crap out of them, or in a in a in a party in a in a voice chat doing it, it's just not the same. You like I like to see the I like to see the energy sucked out of your out of your body when I literally <laughs> pull off this comeback that's going to make you say I got to wait six more times and get behind four more quarters before I can play this person again. I miss yeah. that type of thing, but I will play this because I really really like the aesthetic of this one. Um, it was it was more maybe it was just the way that the game was the presentation of the game for five was that I didn't gravitate to it. But this having that third strike feel will definitely bring me um, probably most likely back to it. I still don't know where I'm going to play it. In. It might be on Xbox. It could be on PlayStation. Just depends on which one feels better for the controller. And if yeah. I can get my hands on a fighting stick, because that's another thing too. Fighting sticks are not cheap. It, I, I will spend two hundred dollars on a fighting stick. I gotta yeah. definitely want to play the game more consistently. Asa, so. can you pause the video at a certain point? Like what anything video? is possible. <laughs> Anything There's uh there was a kind of a viral tweet that they like over accentuated Chun Li at one point during at one of her kicks. Oh no, yeah, we're not I, I can see that Chun Li's butt. Right there. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, they did. They uh, yeah, I saw looking I, chunky. I, I saw that, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I've been more of a Mortal Kombat person, but just mostly due Same. to that that type of game. I love that, that type of gameplay. Uh, who knows what the heck that was? That probably was Coke. Mark, Mark like <laughs> sound like Gaz unzipping or something. I uh, it was. 
Uh, I was, Look at your controller. I was guess, unzipping yes, the yeah. controller just to change the D-pad from the circular one to see because Forte, you were talking about how much controller feels better. And I'm just oh, yeah, trying you... to see what felt better. Yeah, I yeah. I think I think I'd, yeah, this is fine. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. If you get this is yeah, this is fine compared to the original one. So in general, yeah. I, I think a lot of people are super. I'm just excited that it's finally coming to Xbox. Jesus. Oh man, hey, a lot of people weren't excited, but a lot of people were. Aaron Greenberg even tweeted, "Yeah, I can't wait to play Street Fighter." Although, question: How much we will actually play Street Fighter? But respect him if he does. I'm not gatekeeping there, but no, the game looks good. There were some bits I didn't didn't follow the press release after. And there were bits where he, you're working, work, walking in some world. Oh, the, oh, you talk about the city. Yeah, what oh, is yeah. that? Oh yeah, you about to, this is about to be the most monetized version of Street Fighter you ever played in your life. <laughs> as soon as, as soon as I saw, like they as soon as they showed it at the end, I was like, oh man, this looks like 2K all over again. They about, <laughs> oh, they, about to, they about to put you in a city where you could change your outfits, your colors, or your clothes, uh, uh, and all the different stuff. I'm, I'm telling you, they about to monetize the crap out of this game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's uh, off from the truth. Oh, man. Thanks for the stark reality of what <laughs> Capcom are actually going to do. Because all the fighters, even Tekken 6, loads of that as well. Although they did give you a fair few monetization. Well, guess what? Well, guess what? If Dead or Alive can do it, Street Fighter yeah. can do it. Oh, God. And Dead or Alive is the most egregious one out there. They make you pay almost $1,000 for all of their skins. And there you're taking clothes off, not playing on. <laughs> yeah, you can really see the curves then. <laughs> hey, so speaking of curves, are you a Street Fighter 6 fan, Street Fighter fan? <laughs> I, I like Street Fighter 2 a long time ago, and I, I played a little bit of Street Fighter 4, but I'm at the point where like, I cast fireballs and jump over them and like use the, the basic three attacks that Ryu and Ken have. And as they layer on more yeah. mechanics, I'm kind of like... I don't play them enough to get into those mechanics. I like, um, I do uh, like fighting games. I like Killer Instinct. I like games with good counter mechanics. And the trailer did look like it's got some nice counter mechanics. So I'm hoping, yeah, maybe yeah. I'll, I'll give Street Fighter 6 a go. Monetization is a massive concern, not just because of this city that, that Forte's mentioned, but because of the way they handled Street Fighter 5 and because of the way that the fighting yeah. community accepts Dead or Alive and Tekken. Um, like, yeah. I don't want to pay 70 quid for the game and then get a season pass for 40 quid that includes fighters and costumes yeah. and then another one and then another one and then another one. Um, yeah. But hopefully, hopefully when it's, I don't know, there, there'll be a point in time where I want to jump into some Street Fighter. I'll play you if you want. We'll see who wins. It'll be a public massive spectacle. I doubt it because you don't will. normally... What are you talking about, you liar? We haven't even fought. Let's let's do for beat em ups because I will glaze in your face. Um, assuming, <laughs> assuming the net code is good because Street Fighter games. See, the net excuses code are coming in. We've not. It's like the, the first hint of a plan is like, oh, <laughs> what excuse shall I use already? <laughs> well, you gotta re well, you gotta remember um, the net code is bad for everybody, so it's an even playing field. Yeah, it's true. It's true. No, that's, I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm just saying the net code typically is three. Killer Instinct shat on loads of games because it had the best net code it by did. far. And one of the best net codes in gaming. Although Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix also had an incredible net code in, at the time. It was amazing. Shout out, to that the, game. shout out to the CEO who got away. Uh, Iron Galaxy. Shout out to them. <sighs> What happened to uh, them, man? They were great, uh, man. They, 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 they're part of Amazon now. <laughs> That's uh, what happened to them. Rest in peace, Iron Galaxy. That's all I can say to that. Uh, what a shame. Games Lord, thank you for the HRK telling us. But his top three of state of play was Stray as number one, two, Callisto Protocol, and three, Final Fantasy 16. Fair enough. Decent list. Straight, straight. It was amazing. Fire Shadow, thank you for the five dollars. Super because I literally built my own VR uh, motion simulator with VR and PC. Forza Horizon Five and Forza Eight not having VR is extremely missed opportunity. I think Asa will agree with you. To uh, thank you again, Fire Shadow, for the two dollars super chicken. Sorry, I was a few minutes earlier in the stream. That's not a problem at all. Uh, our uh, our our Roj, uh, double R O O O R G. What kind of name is that? Thank you for the two pound super because best jump scare was splices in Bioshock. I, the first splice that did scare the crap out of me in that game. Actually, I, I didn't like jump scares. I think they're a bit cheap. But yeah, uh, Alvin, mm -hmm. thank you so much for the five dollar super because 
King of Fighters 15 input latency is 80% better on Xbox. Some tournament players already saying they'll go to Xbox if there's cross-play and PlayStation still has issues. PS5 still has still issues. That's not far off. I actually have heard something similar on that as well in the last gen uh, in terms of Xbox and PlayStation. And in fact, oddly, the 360 was the home for, uh, for tournaments. They sided with the Xbox for a lot, although everyone ended up using their own bloody um, arcade sticks. Splendor for us, thank you for the $2 super chat. It goes Street Fighter 6, I want all the smoke. Hey, Forte Boo Boo, shout out to Splendor. <laughs> hey, Splendor for us. <laughs> and again with the $2 super chat, it goes at the park with the family, phone dying, good show. Shout out to Splendor for us. Shout out to Blaze, 4K in the chat. Holding on to a Spider-Man PlayStation, feeling betrayed um, that Spider-Man's coming on. PlayStation, which is the next topic. Spider-Man is now multi-platform. It's coming to PC, sorry. Spider-Man and Miles Morales, which caused all kinds of reactions, not just Blaze. Although Blaze, you know, d as I saw a lot of people come at you, Blaze, like, this is not satire. <laughs> I, I understand where you're coming from and you're mostly jesting because I know what you're like, but I saw a lot of rabid people just like, no, this is not satire. It, 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 I know. Right. But, brilliant. Yeah. Well, what do you what do you think of this cult? The narrative has died. People got people were surprised. Let's be honest. We all got I mean, surprised. Yeah, Blaze, Blaze, got Blaze surprised. is just Blaze just messing, like, you know, just it yeah, it's just um it is there a better word than satire? I mean, it's it's an overreaction for fun, and and of course, people are like, I just can't believe it. But one of the guys that you called out in your video, I think, actually really did mean. Oh, amazing, Lucas! Oh, he, he yeah, he was actually truly outraged. Like Blaze is, is just is uh got us rolling, just messing about. a good time, right? right? But um, we were in the party chat cackling like old witches. <laughs> <laughs> when this announcement came in because <clears throat> i mean as an xbox fan uh i literally came off of pc to go back to xbox because i was having so much fun on console with friends and everything but to see to sit there through all those years of how you don't need an xbox because their big games are going to pc and i knew that thousands of people had said it, but, 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 but spider-man will never go to pc or you know, yeah. or God around, or God well, world will never come to PC. Insomniac said it, Cole. Insomniac yeah. said it. <laughs> well, and to be fair to Insomniac, I mean that was the agreement, and that was what it was at the time. Years ago, in 2018 yeah. or in 2018, when that tweet went out, like the game was out, and they had no intention of ever putting it on PC. And PlayStation probably said, "We're never going to PC at the time." And uh, Sean Layden had other plans and Jim Ryan had other plans. So hyperbole is a great word. Thank you so much, Isa, for, for that. Yes. Um, it was it was it was glorious. It was glorious. <laughs> because the strange thing uh, of all games, Spider-Man 2018 is their highest selling first party exclusive. It's their biggest one. It's at 33 million sales. No, you just don't get games that sell that well. So there's no reason to put it into PC other than to say from your whole chest that we want to put <laughs> all of our bangers on PC <laughs> as soon as possible. Bye. And if Nixus is, I speculate that Nixus is putting these games in two or three months time of work. They're getting this game ready for PC. If that's the truth, Nixus yeah. is going to be cranking out PC bangers to Steam and Epic Game Store so freaking fast that PlayStation Slate will become multi-platform. Well, it's not really multi-platform, let's be honest. It's PlayStation yeah. platform. It's PlayStation exclusive of their first party studio. Console so yeah, this is yeah. this Jim Ryan's been trying to turn up the, the gas stove on the boiling pot of water for the frogs. And PlayStation fans were not ready for their games to go to pc but uh you're gonna see an exponential speed of footsteps going towards pc like never before you know miles morales and sackboy and returnal are uh, about a less than two years old and mm -hmm. they're already coming to pc mm -hmm. so i think you'll see god of war ragnarok come out in september maybe october on only playstation 5 and then sometime next year they'll put it on pc but after that after 2022 I think PC games from PlayStation are going to be coming as soon as 
possible. And and if that doesn't mean day and date, I think it just means that they need time to get the PC port to come out if they're not doing it alongside. My favorite part, Gaz, my Uh favorite part is people like uh, (laughs) Face 23 Book in New York and J-Dub City and those guys saying, it's not day and date. They they, got to wait years for the game. Oh, it's okay. It's like, do you literally realizing you're trying to limit the potential, the growth for PlayStation to go buy more studios? The more money they make, the bigger they grow, the bigger the budget. Very Sean good Layden, point. Sean Layden, Phil Spencer, Jim Ryan have all said up front, and you weaponized it. <laughs> He's literally said that it is not sustainable to build AAA games. It's super expensive. We can't afford it. We don't sell enough on console. Phil said it six years ago and said Quantum Break's coming to PC day and day. Yeah. PlayStation is slowly trying to turn that fire up because they need to be able to, they spend all this investment. They make a lot of money, but they know they can make a lot more. Everything will just feed out and grow into the PlayStation platform. Like you're seeing Xbox doing. Xbox can buy whatever the f- they want right now because <laughs> they I are making so well. great That's a really money. good sound effect right there. <laughs> I got... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Ace, Ace over there messing with a the machine right now. That's what's going on. I need no, a no. soundboard to do that stuff. Yeah, He's Jim like... Ryan's like, let me see uh, on PC. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, I'm sorry. So you made a good I, point. I, I, that was a and, that was, no, you, you hit the nail on the head there. And actually, what you made me realize I didn't consider before Forte Colt says, they didn't need to put Spider-Man. That game sold 33 million. So if Spider-Man can go onto PC, that means anything, anything what, can go. It's what, all, what, all is fair in love and war now. It was what, all for a game. It's all coming to PC, surely. What was said in that blog post over a year ago, the whole slate, right? Whole, whole slate, slate. Whole slate, man. Look, whole okay, slate. Let's be for, and this, I try to tell people this. Let, let's let's go back to 2015 when it came to Xbox doing the same exact thing when they were like, yo, we're going to put our games on. P- we're going to put Quantum Break on PC day and day. We're going to put Ge- Gears of War 5 on PC day and day. And what did the Halo. Xbox and hey, what did the fans say of Xbox back then? Oh, well, why should I hold an Xbox? Why should I do this? Why should I do that? Why are we getting? Why does it feel like Xbox isn't the priority because you're putting your games on PC? If they want to play Xbox games, you should buy an Xbox. And guess what? Five years later, Xbox fans are used to it. They've gotten to the point where they understand the philosophy of what Xbox is doing. They want to get more games out there for more people to play. They want you to be able to enjoy the ecosystem wherever you play at. And over the course of the last three years, since 2018, we've been telling, like, don't be surprised when PlayStation does the same thing. And And people keep forgetting that this is not the 2014, 2013 PlayStation. This isn't Andrew House. This isn't Jack Trenton. <laughs> this isn't this, this isn't Sean Layton. This is the 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 man, the myth, the legend, Jim Ryan, the person, <laughs> the person that brung like that rose like a phoenix from the ashes over in the European market. It took the one part of PlayStation that was struggling and made it super profitable to the point where he ended up becoming the head man of PlayStation. And Jeez. what the, and he was and, and he was the financial advisor of place. He was the financial the CFO of PlayStation then. So what is a money motivated CFO going to do when he is in charge of the whole thing? Yeah. Oh everything is good. oh so we're gonna we're gonna mimic this and we're gonna put it everywhere um yeah. now we're now we're starting to see why people like you know like Layton probably left the company because they didn't like the direction that playstation was going in and yeah. honestly i will be i will tell you one thing spider-man shocked me only because i was expecting other games to come before spider-man i did expect uh. spider-man to sooner or later come I thought we would get probably the Uncharted collection or something like that, or maybe the Ratchet and Clank games, or even freaking Returnal since they they leaked out a, a PC, I mean, a PC store page for it on Steam. I was expecting yeah. those games to come, but when I saw Spider Man, I was like, oh. <laughs> I, I, so, like you said, Gas, the fact that that game could come to PC 
everything can come to PC. There is nothing off limits when it comes to this. And when they say by 2025, we expect 50% of all of our IPs to be on PC and code is absolutely right. I think that number, I mean, that number, but the time between console release and PC is going to get to the point where it's going to probably be only a three month to six month window. Yeah. Uh, three to six months is actually exactly I in think, my head. I, I, was thinking I do think that they're going, I do think they will never, well, I will say never. I think at some point they may get to the day and day thing, but if anything, I think they, as long as they're still selling PlayStations at a ridiculous clip, they will always honor the PlayStation side of the and give them first dibs at it because always, they are really, yeah. really good at the I double so. dip when it comes to that. But the moment console sales dip to a point where they can put those games somewhere else and make just as much money on another platform that same day that they would on PlayStation, you'll see that number flip uh, and they'll start doing it even closer than three months. But I do think three months is the absolute limit they'll do at this point when it comes to these games. So for Horizon Forbidden West, don't be surprised if they announce it for sometime the end of this year or the beginning of next year. I, I do believe mm. that's going to happen. That would be huge that would be a saucy video of horizon came out next year to pc that would be huge and yeah i'm not disagreeing there but i still think that would be huge acer surely you were surprised by this and do you think this policy has been catalyzed by the silicon shortage which is afflicting sony so surprised in that of all the PlayStation suite of games, they've, they've said outright that they're going to PC and Spider-Man was the only one that had like this hint of doubt because we don't know the licensing agreement. Now we do. Now we know they can put it on PC. Um, Forte, the Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection is still coming up before it. That's still due in July on PC, yeah, but that was announced is. a while ago. Um, I was expecting Ghost of Tsushima and Demon's Souls to come ahead of, and Returnal to come ahead of Spider-Man, but... It's there. What's what's going to be really interesting to see, there's there's two different approaches to the way that you can sell games, and we'll see these as customers, we'll see them from the outset. You can go for this whole day and date approach that people are speculating on, or you can go for this double dipping approach. And the only other like publisher that really does the double dipping approach is Rockstar and Take Two, with oh. Red Dead Redemption 2 and Grand Theft Auto. So these huge, huge, mm. huge tentpole, massively inflated budget games. Yeah. They still come out one and then the other, and it's Purely for Sony, it's purely going to be a question of numbers. Like, how do they get the most money? And I don't actually know the answer because Definitely. you look at Spider Man and it's 33 million series sales between like the 2018 version, the remaster, and Miles Morales. So that's combined sales between all of those. Um, and you look at that and you see that they're releasing it on PC and you know it's going to sell well on PC. It's going to, it's going to sell fantastically well. I'm going to get it on PC. Which is all you need to know. That means it's going to no. It's just it's clearly going to do fantastically well. So you look at Sony's approach. Yeah, yeah. Would it have done better or worse if it had come out on the PC at the same time as the PlayStation? And it's a difficult question to answer without some examples that they can actually push out and do. Um, the other question that we will never know the answer to from the outside is the development approach can be very very different because at Sony they can get their first party studios and they can say make this game for a PlayStation. Don't worry about anything else. Here's the PlayStation 5 mm. hardware. Make this mm. the best PlayStation game ever. And then they can say, hey, Nixus, this is your problem now. See if you can get it, <laughs> see if you can get it running on PC. Yeah. And that's a very different that's proposition, though. That's a very I mean, different proposition. Is it proposition hard to, to get them running on PC, Asa? Because I heard a I PlayStation about... fan say yesterday, uh, good luck getting these games to run on a, on a high-end PC because these games are made special for PlayStation. And the PlayStation power, like the... They're so demanding for PlayStation, they'll never <laughs> run on PC. It's, it's definitely not hard to get Spider-Man, like a PlayStation 4 game, to run on PC. Spider-Man 2, that's designed with a minimum spec being an SSD, is probably going to pose Nix as more of a challenge. But that's where it becomes interesting. That's where you see, like, if they, tell their, if they task their first-party studios to tailor a game to the PlayStation 5, then the PlayStation 5 is essentially going to be the floor for that game, like lowest common denominator, because they've had nothing else to consider. If you tell those yeah. studios, make this game for the PlayStation 5 and a range of PCs, development changes. What the game is changes. Um, and we'll never know from the outside. We'll, we'll never know from the outside what they're doing there. Unless, obviously, if they're day and date, then we know that things have changed on that front. But until that time, who knows? Maybe someone from Sony will come out and tell us. Personally, I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you've bought a PlayStation 5, you, you'd hope 
<laughs> for selfish reasons that, that PlayStation 5 is the focus of development, but it doesn't necessarily make a whole heap of business sense for Sony to keep doing it that way. So Yeah, I, I, I think Asa made a really good point when he talked about one student one platform one studio when it comes to take two and rockstar being able to do something like this and i truly believe this is the first game of any game really that you know it's going to sell on console and it's going to definitely sell on pc and the big difference is grand theft auto i it's, it's sold over 155 million copies and part of me believes that if they release that game day and date everywhere it wouldn't be at that number because then you're because that game drove people from PC to buy consoles because they didn't want they already know Rockstar going to make me wait a year and a half to two years to play Grand Theft Auto until it comes to PC. And if you want to experience it, you're going to have to buy a console. So get, PC gamers knew that game was never coming to PC in a in a in a quick and easy pass of a place. So it's so, so many because of that. So I do think their philosophy in that is definitely the best sound one. Whereas Spider-Man is interesting because we have never seen a game that took off as like they had marketing galore for this game everywhere subways yeah. they took over nba side courts at the nba finals for it and everything <laughs> they marketed this game to h and back That's and yeah. i guarantee you that there would have been some pc gamers that probably would have like they probably did buy consoles for it but i think this is going to make people like even myself i'm going to double dip on it i'm definitely buying this game again just to play it on a pc platform swinging through the city at 120 plus 20 per second that's incredible i can only yeah. imagine what it's going to feel like so i do agree with that it's but every game can't do this so is this going to be the blueprint for sony going forward is God of War, like God of War is going to probably sell a million. It's probably one of their most successful franchises, but is it going to even come close to what? Is it nah. going to even come close to? Is it going to sell twenty million copies on PC nah. like, it did, like it did on console? There is a good chance that Spider Man may not sell thirty three million on PC, but it might crack ten. Well, it won't. It might but crack ten. Ten million on PC alone—that's really high. It could between five and ten. It could. That'd be crazy. And that money rolls through and then Sony seeing that seeing those numbers come in is like day and day. That's it. <laughs> oh, let's see oh, those numbers cyber. go through and go, wow, this worked fantastically well. Let's do it again. Like, let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, <laughs> but, yeah exactly. but it's gotta be the it's right game, like though. Every game won't do it though. It's gotta be the right yeah. game. Absolutely. Absolutely has to be the right game. Games Law with the HRK 10. Thank you so much because Callisto's you Unreal Engine 5. That's why no wonder they left last gen behind. Is it? Last gen again or cross gen? I thought it was cross last. Oh, I could be I could be wrong, only. but I thought they announced it as next gen only, <laughs> and in the recent showcase they said actually previous gen as yeah. well. Now I could be wrong on that. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Hoggy with the five dollars super. She goes just to be clear: Spider Man and Miles Morales combined sold thirty three million. Okay, yeah, combined, yeah, both games. Uh, okay, they didn't even talk. And Miles Morales is coming, which is uh, almost no. two years old. Yeah, and that yeah, exactly. A lot of people are like four years, like uh, what's his name, Lucas. It's uh, 2018. You waited that long, nah, Miles Morales. Unless you think that's DLC, um, then it doesn't <laughs> count. <laughs> uh, your daddy, thank you so much for being a member for nine months, enough to give birth. If Jim Ryan gets a publisher for the size of ATV, what? ATV, what? What's ATV? I think you meant to say Activision, probably, right? Yeah. Uh, a a on the backs of the PC port monies, do you think he will get similar reverence of Phil Spencer? I, I don't understand how you can get a publisher that size on the back of PC port money. I, unless mm. you're going to be you're 70 billion? I doubt it. Um, face Brooklyn, New York with a $20. This, I already haven't even read the chat in my head. And I know this is going to be a spicy one. Thank you for the $20 Super Chat. goes, everything can come to PC from Sony. Who cares? It's a, a one to three years old. You're celebrating as a... I knew it. I knew it. You're celebrating as a win, Colt Eastwood. I told you so. When Sony themselves, they're putting games on PC. Live service games will be day and date. Single player games won't be. Colt Eastwood. Why would, you think that it, why would you think that their <laughs> oh. single player games won't be on PC? Like... 
Yoshida and Jim Ryan have already told you. They've already told you that they're going multi-platform. And they already told you that they're that the services mean more to them than the console sales. Like it's just they're just trying to prepare people like him who aren't ready for this. Like to say that that's not a win, like that's absolutely a win to go to PC. It was it if it's day and date, it's a win. If it's in four years, it's a win. Like, what does it matter if someone I always get this thing, like people say, you know. Oh, you know, why are they putting their games on PC? They're ruining my console. You already bought the console. You already bought it. What are you going to do? Throw it away? Like, why do you? Ha- why does your console have to be so important and ve- ve- verified and vilified that you bought the console by having exclusives? Oh, good. That game's exclusive. My console still means something. You already paid four or five hundred dollars for it. Who knows how long ago? This purchase already said and done. If you need a reason to keep it there, that's your own personal problem. There's plenty of games to play. And PlayStation uh, just wants to put their game. Oh, here, I'll make it. Let me just, instead of all that, let me just tell you this. Yeah. <laughs> PlayStation is going to put their games on PC ASAP. All right? <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> yeah, it's still, it got real close to his camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's the closest you'll see. You see the cult covered up. See the pores in that man's face right now. Oh man, I'm 78 years old. I, I've earned every wrinkle. Yeah, I mean, geez, it's just the whole weird the shuffle to say it ain't a win. You know, it's, it's we're not taking an L. It's not day and date. It's like. Holy crap, you should be begging for them to be day and date. Like you should be begging for them to be in a service. Imagine. I'm so, I, I don't I don't want this is your show, Asa. I'm sorry. Go for but it, go for it. Imagine, imagine that PlayStation said for PlayStation Premium's top tier service, we want you to have games like God of War Ragnarok, the next Ratchet and Clank, the new mm-hmm. Uncharted 5, or the new Naughty Dog sci-fi game, and The Last of Us Remaster, all those games will come to you day and date for just $18 a month or whatever it is. We would be, we would all be doing backflips. Everyone, the PlayStation fans would be so happy. There might be a couple people that will be so upset that their games got regulated down to a service and they've lost all their wonderful oh, if that religious happens. value. Holy smokes! <laughs> like you, instead of instead of the super chat, send a certified letter to Sony and ask them to put your games in in a day and date service. Who certifies so letters? For it. <laughs> Oh well, I mean, I do. <laughs> send a certified email. Certified. Send, send him a message on WhatsApp. Tell him to put your games there. So, you'll be so much happier. You won't be so cranky. You, you'll be like me. I'm always smiling. I'm super happy. I'm enjoying I'm it. I'm asking because I penned so, the letter. I need someone to certify it. Who's going to certify my letter? To letter. I got this here. I got the step right here. Um, <laughs> No, but I, I listen, man. Let's if we if we boil this down to it, and I always tell people, watch what you say when you're having these conversations on Twitter and stuff like that, because that's where all this stuff comes from. People have to kind of realize when they sit there and say, "Oh, the reason Game Pass is this is because they're not." you know you're not supporting developers you're not doing this you're not supporting the developers developers aren't being supported why should you you should want to buy your games and i'm thinking like in this instant now you don't want the games to come to pc but <laughs> they're but by them coming to pc we're supporting the developer that made the game so you want it to be relegated to your platform where they probably don't even make new copies of the game anymore so the only way you can get the game on the platform is you buy it digitally through the store for an astronomically more price than you could actually buy a used copy for or if you're on a pc platform the game comes there and guess what you're still supporting the developer and the developer is getting money for the thing that you want from them which is an experience that you probably Unless already pirate because that, that's the next excuse well, that I've well, seen. Mm-hmm. Who cares about <laughs> all that? Pirating. It doesn't matter, but it's just like it's real crazy. Like people have this narrative in their head where they feel like, well, just because it's on my platform, it needs to stay there. And we want to support the developer, but then you don't want to support the developer if the game goes somewhere else. And yeah. that it, and I never understood that thought process. So people need to really truly think about what you say, because guess what? Later down the line, that might come back against you. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's cut through the nonsense. It, this isn't concern for the devs. It's never been a concern for no. support the devs. The support the devs lines are absolute bullshit from fanboys who just want a console war. And this is a point taken away from them. 
which I understand, but at least be honest about it. Don't throw the fake, oh, don't support the devs argument, because that's not, that's just, everyone can see through that BS. That's nonsense. Uh, and yeah, you know, Colt, you made a great point. It's like, why are you shilling for Sony and not having day and date? That's possible now, thanks to PC money that you're going to get. You should be saying thank you, Sony. Well done. Now demand better from that service. Yeah. That's what you should be doing. I don't The understand. days of your console being special because it has a game that someone else doesn't have is like deteriorating so fast. And it's it's really, I, I know we could bring Nintendo into the conversation. Nintendo just, mm -hmm. they play by their own rules. And I never and they expect take the them. Piss. Yeah. Sure. I mean, they do, th they do, they do stuff that's really dumb and they're really successful for it. They do really and great things. Yeah. Yeah, they do really great things that I don't really care for. I, I don't. They're amazing. I, I'll just always say that Nintendo's incredibly amazing, and the the, yeah. the way they run this industry, their own way is fantastic. But when you yeah, look yeah, at absolutely. PlayStation and and Xbox, they're very 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 similar, and now they're super similar. They're doing almost everything the same way, and they're at least trying to chase each other's tails different ways. So just ask for more value. And yeah, and these games are, PlayStation's asking you to pay $70 for their games now, and they want you to pay less to play on a PS4. Super yeah. weird. Yeah. Super weird. Anybody who's a developer knows that um, that they build these things into, uh, I don't know, it's the PC guys even get them even cheaper, and they get even yeah. more features. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, don't tell me. Well, ray tracing and, and double tax. the frame rate costs more. It's like uh, next gen tax. It's next gen tax. Yeah, next gen tax. The, price, just, the, the price of games guys is never about the cost that. of the games. The price of the games is about what people are willing to pay. So, yeah, early adopters yeah. are willing to pay. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not advocating for it or saying that Sony have done the right thing, like increasing the price. But it's not about ray tracing costing more than not having ray tracing or anything silly like that. It's about Sony saying these people will pay more. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Guess what? That ratchet and click, that ratchet and click that costs seventy bucks that they say can only be done on a PlayStation Five. Wait till it comes to PC mm -hmm. and it's ten dollars cheaper. Oh mm -hmm. man, yeah, that, that, that's taking the mix. And I wonder, Asa, would would Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart on PC require to have an SSD in the PC requirements or be recommended? Well, that sounds amazing. There's, there's ways around it. Um, if you've got enough memory in a PC, then you can do things to compensate for not having an SSD. I'd be surprised if any PC comes out, PC game comes out requiring an SSD in the next few years, because a lot of people still don't have a long them. ways out, huh? So they'll find ways around yeah. it, including for Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, <laughs> that will be that will be hilarious. What 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 is with the old games? No one cares narrative. Like what what is that? Like it's an old game. Who cares? Like wh when did games get an expiration date? I'm playing Wolfenstein New Colossus you know, again. Uh, Co Cole, let me say something. The argument has they've goalposts keep shifting. It was like, uh -huh. oh, it's Oops. not going to be this. They'll keep. They'll hold on to the last thing. It's old. Games. At first it was. Uh, at first it was like it's, old, it's a four-year-old old. game, and then the next year they're like it's a three-year-old game, and then this year like it's a two-year-old <laughs> game, and then next year what will they say? It's a one-year-old game. Know, Man, it's yeah. a nine month old game. game. You can have a baby in nine months. It's so long you can give create life by the time the game came out. Oh my god. That is <laughs> not a big deal. <laughs> so that game expired. Can't talk about it. So, I mean, when they do day and date, what's now where will they move the goalpost? It's always interesting to say, you know, well, I mean, they're just doing it now. Xbox has been doing it for eight years. That's what they'll say. That'll well, be the goalpost. Yeah. Listen, man, they get mad just because they're bringing a game out that's four years later. So, how are they going to feel when it's six, three months later, six months later? Screw day mm -hmm. and day. They don't even have to do day and day. Just the fact that they might release it three or four or five months after the fact. It seems like that's an issue. But like I said, this is something that us as Xbox fans have been, you know, they they tutored us to this level. They said, hey, <laughs> yeah. we're going we're, we're gonna to tell you this and do this for six years. And guess what? By the time we get to the eighth year, or not the eighth year, by the time we get to the third year, which was 2018, and they bought all those studios, you started thinking like, yo, Game Pass, all of these studios making all of these games. I can play my games anywhere I want to. And Xbox fans are like, yo, that's the way to go.
And yeah. guess what? That's mm-hmm. what PlayStation is doing. They're turning the water up on the boiling frog very slowly. <laughs> and, and at some point, you're going to have to understand that this is the direction they're going in. It doesn't mean they're going to fully go completely like Xbox, but they're still heading in the same direction. Exactly. And have you, chat, seen the dwindling sales of Xbox? You have to understand, everyone's saying this is the death knell of Xbox, yet then you're making excuses when Xbox sell outsells the PS5. How is the Xbox outselling the PlayStation <laughs> if everyone's buying the games up their magical PCs? It's nonsense. Khalid's yeah. got... Khalid in the chat has another goalpost move. He says, no day and date, and no three to six months later either. Expect at least a one-year gap for single-player titles, he's saying, for PlayStation. But he says, Maybe. games as a service titles might go day and date, however. So Khalid is sense. even moving the goalpost saying... PlayStation won't put their single player games, but their games as service games that they invest just as much money in will go into a service. So like even, well, even more money, there's no Cope, standard here. But even there's more no standard. Money, but even more money, Coke, because that um that presentation they put out shows that by 2025, they're gonna be spending close to 59, 60% of their money and their revenues going towards the um the revenue that they're gonna use when it comes to games as a service. Mm-hmm. And forty percent is going to, and forty percent is going towards traditional games, yeah. where it's eighty percent, where it's eighty eight percent traditional, and nineteen or what is eleven percent in the games as a service. So they already decided a long time ago that we're already heading in this direction. So yeah, uh, but yeah. they also uh, said that they're going to increase fourfold their revenue from games and PC. So you're looking at Nexus possibly making several games per year uh pc ports of playstation games so they're doubling down really hard on the games on pc they're like you said forte they're going to spend a huge investment in games of service and obviously a huge investment in service-based subscriptions so that traditional model is not uh viable anymore and oh, yeah. and then of course then they'll move the goalposts towards how many consoles sell. How, well, PlayStation how, sold more consoles, but uh, how, that's how another get, funny. How do you get the three hundred million uh, in revenue on PC, Coat? That's what's so. Yeah. That's, you that's have number, to, you'd have to put out like eight ball. games to PC, I think, right? And they said by twenty twenty five, half of their studio, half of their games will be on PC, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. And that's PlayStation 5 games. That hasn't even so basically half of what we have now will already be on PS5. I mean PS5 and it'll be on PC plus whatever comes over the next 2 to 3 years. So just look at it this way. Whatever they announce over the next 2 to 3 years that comes out, half of those games are coming to PC. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's a change. That's a big change for Sony. That's a big change that people didn't think it would happen, but it's happening. And just get used to it. And I see in the chat say maybe it's a year out, whatever. But it's still happening. It's still happening. Um, and and PlayStation will thrive as a result. Uh, so uh, you should the, be excited. Face has, makes a good point. He said the PlayStation C- or the Sony CEO said day and date is not viable to them. Which that's what he said. But the missing part there is Jim Ryan is fighting fiercely with PlayStation and Sony leadership to get that multi-platform and PC day and date. I think that's really what he's pushing. So it's going to take time for them to start seeing the numbers. So I think what he did was he, he got the bone where he said, let us get a bunch of games on PC. We'll promise you a four times increase in revenue just from PC alone. And then the leadership will start to see the business plan that Jim Ryan's looking out ahead, which is partially copying what Microsoft's doing. And then PlayStation will say, okay, we'll let you do this, and we're going to allow this, we're going to allow that. And that's when you'll start to see the change. So when, when Forte, and I, Forte and I talk about turning up the boiling water, um, part of that is that friction with the Japanese leadership that they have to mm-hmm. kind of see where this is going and see if it's going to work and be convinced. And that's what's going to take time. It's not necessarily them warming up the fans. Like, they do have to fight against this woven fabric of the of the PlayStation fans that won't allow them to go multi-platform or go on PC or ruin the precious value of their wonderful console that is so special to them. It, it, <laughs> there is, it really is about the leadership and the economics of them that all has to work out. And if it's going to take It's also very early on. 
It's early on, yeah. like when they say it's not viable, them. that's not in light of this very new policy of bringing games out to PC and the money that generates, because that's a big question mark around how that performs. Sony can estimate, but doesn't understand. The moment that happens and it starts to really supplement their income and the money that they're generating, then everything is fair game. That How you use that money is up to you. You can buy more studios. You could use that to fund day and date or if you actually believe this argument where they say the first party first party quality will dwindle if we do day and date, this money could then offset that. Although I don't really trust that at face value. Although I'm sure there's a lot of facets to it. Let me quickly read these super chats. Shabs inevitable. Thank you so much for the two pound super checkers. Gaz handstand for the team in response to me saying I'm wearing nothing and for the waist down. I was lying. Uh, uh, very sticky to this chair. <laughs> That'd be horrible. Patrick, thanks so much for the five dollars super checkers. Gaz, you think Horizon will be a saucy video? What about when Rift Apart comes to PC, running perfectly without the SSD? And we talked about that, and that would be an epic thing because I was one of the first people who said, "No, nah, no, nah, that's the SSD working. Can't see that kind of tech." Although, in fairness, Ratchet actually scaled down what it showed and how it works in practice isn't as smooth uh, as the trailer uh, showed. But still, yeah, like Asen, um, the gents mentioned, there's other ways around it. Most likely, I'm not the technical guy. Black Ronin 357, thank you for the $5 super check. As only dummies say Game Pass isn't supporting devs. Facts. Sounds yeah. like Republicans on gun control measures. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> games low with a HRK 10. <laughs> Uh, how can single player high budget games make profit uh, on Game Pass? Um, literally, in response to, funny, in the two super chats, well, there's a multitude of different things, and we had this question a lot of times. Um, the model of live service games does definitely supplement or help on um, games as a service. There are ways around it, and that is the challenge, but Games Lord. Uh, do you understand that they do make profit day and day because I'll, ultimately they get paid? I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of that. Um, my favorite game, Destiny. Bungie makes it. They had a mission inside the game for a weapon that was a special mission. You could only you had the DLC, you had to play it. Once you beat that mission, they they sold two ornaments for a weapon uh, for a sniper rifle. Very iconic weapon for Destiny One, the Black Spindle. And they sold those ornaments. Those ornaments by themselves, they were 10 bucks each. I bought both of them. Those ornaments literally funded a whole DLC, a whole expansion for Destiny. They came out and said, You they said that? Yeah, they literally they came out and said because they were using the Everver. That was when they were with Activision still. They were doing the whole um the whole monetization with the Eververse, and they were like, these, the the just you people buying these ornaments funded a whole DLC, like a whole Jeez. expansion Whoa. for the game. So that just lets you know that live wow. service games do more than just fund the game they're working on. They can fund things outside of the game. Think about Halo Infinite, not Halo Infinite, Halo 5. They announced that Halo 5 had made all of its money back in the first 30 days of the game because of people going into Warzone, buying all of the different um, crates and stuff inside the game. And guess what? That that by itself helped them fund Halo Infinite. It helped them yeah. fund other yeah. games and other things inside of the um, inside of the um, Xbox ecosystem. So just because one game fails doesn't mean another game isn't going to succeed because of uh, the money that was brought in from another place. That's what people got to understand. Your example, it's not though, I have to. Your example is is why I'm skeptical. Like, like okay, your example ahead. is like. So the question was like, how can you successfully fund like single player games on a service? And your example is that you sell a load of stuff. And that's where my skepticism for Game Pass comes from because that's not the direction that I want to see it go. And it's not necessarily how things will be. I think Game Pass can support a diverse range of games. But when you have all of these executives coming out and saying, well, it won't fund this particular type. Like, we'd struggle to put God of War on that service. We'd struggle to put Red Dead Redemption 3 on that service. If the answer to it is selling stuff in those games, as not well as putting it on the service. Don't. No, but well, generally, that's the skepticism. Like, I don't want the answer to be Game Pass works because you supplement it by siphoning money off of everybody. Yeah. 
I'd rather no, buy I the agree games with in you that case. I agree with you. I agree with you. Siphoning though, DLC for instance is su su but supplementing. Monetization is a nuanced here. topic. There's a lot to it. Well, we're not talking. Yeah, about, well, when I, I guess I'll clarify it more. It wasn't the fact that that can fund like you're talking about just that gaming game i'm saying god of war can still release the way it releases it doesn't have to have any type of monetization in it at all but something else like let's just say let's say playstation owns fortnite fortnite can literally fund the development of god of war if it if how special and how great that game is by itself mm. can yeah. fund a game like god of war so another they can, first party they title can the first they party yeah if, if they have if they have a that's why they're doing these 10 live service games if one of them hits yeah that's what Jim Ryan said. It can literally fund all of their all the development for all of their games going forward for an entire year, maybe two years Which or something is again, like that. Which is again, though, not necessarily an argument for a game pass model. Because no, that's yeah. not a game pass model. So, um, well, we're just yeah. talking about just games that are in the sort of like if Halo Infinite was what it needed to be, Halo Infinite maybe could be that for microsoft at this point but right now that game is in such a such a bad place just perceptionally wise it doesn't do what it needs to do but we see instances of a game like halo 5 do that for xbox when it comes to the development of other games and stuff how it actually helped fund part of halo infinite because of the money they made off of that game all of it didn't come from x i mean it all goes to xbox but part of the development of halo infinite came from what they did on halo 5 and all they got to do is find one game that does it they just got to find one game that swings for the fences um do we think that the money for apex legends is only on apex legends that they do for ea some of that money probably got siphoned off to something like jedi survivor they might apex legends probably funded some of jedi survivor so that so the yeah and i agree with that asa like in fact we we talked about this before where I mean, Microsoft as an uh, Xbox as the brand, if right. it has a breadth of yeah. titles, I think, in fact, I think you said this in this show, if it has a breadth of titles, all like you have live service variety, you said this uh, earlier. I didn't said you? many things. One, one of the things that I said not long ago, like a couple of weeks ago, is live service games like Fortnite and Apex and things like that are the antithesis of Game Pass. They're the opposite. So only saying that doing 10 of those. Is a very different it's not it doesn't have to be a different strategy these things can supplement each other but the whole game pass model final fantasy 14 fortnite apex legends all of these games make more than it and they're not on a subscription service it's the antithesis it's a completely different direction that potentially pays massive dividends because the costs going into it are much lower the rewards can be a lot higher so so you can do both, but they don't need to do those live service games to support a subscription service. They can do those live service games to make a buttload of money and put it on games that they want to sell or whatever else. So it's, and again, monetization is always complicated. One thing that is fun though, is you remember when Microsoft did those statistics, people on Game Pass are paying, Yeah. they're playing 140% more than they would without Game Pass and they're paying 150% or something like that, which I just want to point out mm -hmm. categorically invalidates everybody that says it's the best value in gaming. Mathematically, well, it's not. What do you mean? Because they're pay <laughs> because they're paying more money while they're, they're saving more money. money. What by, by the numbers, I don't think. You, I don't think it does. I, I don't by the numbers, with that. being, that being really that. pedantic, it does. Oh, being really pedantic, pedantic you're playing that's a very less pedantic and paying view. more. <laughs> so, meh, you want to yeah. go? I mean, no, but I mean that doesn't. That's just that's that doesn't make sense. But sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that comment makes no sense. It's so fun to me. It's fun no to look at the that, numbers. That <laughs> no, I think I think it's funny what he said. It, it, it's a colloquialism, but it's funny that yeah. uh, <laughs> because I do I do that. I, I got Sniper Elite Five for free, and I spent I five bucks too. on the DLC to go take down the uh, the main leader uh, of that time. But yeah, I had fun. I spent more money. I'm like, oh, I save I save fifty bucks, and then I spent five. But yeah. it's funny. It's yeah. good. No, no, no. I, I mean, I, I, the, you're right, Ace. It's a very nuanced or nuanced topic. We don't even know how it works. You know, you, uh, we talked about, you know, what, when Zenimax happened, how would they justify that purchase in light of, you know, Xbox's model? Same kind of principle applies with this. I agree with you, Forte. Like, you know, you know, Jim Ryan actually said it himself. He said, look, you know, not all of our live service games will hit, but the one that does, will have pay in dividends and that's how much these live service games do the right one will be transformative to 
the financials for that company for that year or whatever, whatever financial period it is. So Epic, Epic literally stopped making other games because of Fortnite. They literally, <laughs> yeah, exactly. the, they literally stole servers from Paragon. They canceled <laughs> the 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 single player version of Fortnite of, of what was it? The Save the World. Save the World. They, they yeah. stopped that, and then guess what? All they do is do Fortnite, and they do. Yeah. It. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, gaming muscle. Thank you for the five dollars super chat. Isn't it a bogue bonus for PC players to get uh, to get PlayStation games, even if it's years later when they were fine with their offerings anyway? Yeah, I mean it's. They're going to be, well, it's not like everyone, PlayStation gamers, uh, PC gamers are more than ha uh, entitled to be happy about it. Yes, yeah. that doesn't mean that they're going to, they have to be satisfied with their offerings and that's it. They can't accept new offerings. Um, but yeah. yeah, absolutely. Loads of PC players I know, uh, wholly exclusively PC players, are going to loving the, the notion of playing Spider-Man. They'll buy it day one. Doesn't mean they're, you know, they... It wasn't enough to justify a purchase of Spider-Man is a big IP, for instance, for God's sake. Like that, are you good? Mm. If you're only just interested in Spider-Man, are you really going to buy a PlayStation? A lot of people will not. A lot of people won't. So, right. yeah. Fl Flush Jackson with a ten dollars super chat. They goes, growing up, we played whatever your friends had. After the NES, I had a Genesis, and friends came over to play it. Most friends had SNES, so we played that. Nobody hated on whatever people had. Lies. I I was console warring from day zero. <laughs> day zero. My friend, who was actually an American neighbor, I was living in Pakistan then. He was a neighbor. He had Nintendo. I had the Sega Mega Drive recorded there. Console warring for from birth. I was like, because I didn't have the Nintendo, so of course I was like, oh yeah, Sonic's better than Mario. Mario sucks and all sorts. And then I bought the Nintendo, and I realized. Um, you needed to touch that. grass back <laughs> in the 80s, game. bro. Yeah. You really needed to touch grass back in the 80s. I had more important things. Into, I, I knew a guy that had a Sega and whatever the Sega was what it called when it first came out. And I'm like, oh, you don't have a Nintendo? And he's like, no. And I'm like, there's different games on. I'm like, oh, you don't have any of these games? Oh, that's different. Oh, let's yeah, play them. Sure. Yeah, but I never got into this. I Sega. literally just shared oh, games with people. I, I I gave people my my Sega CD and let the they wanted to play yeah, Stuart Shark. I said, well, let me play. I said, let me get your Neo Geo, dear bro. That five hundred dollar system with the with the VHS tapes. And we, yeah, we, were, we were switching Neo days Geo. out. Man, it was so. Man, it was so. It, those were <laughs> not, those were the days, bro. Those, that was gaming back then. Real gaming. Oh, so much fun, man. I feel sorry for the new gen. I'm sure they're having a lot of fun, but there was something real about that experience. Right at the, you know, with the magazines as well and the hype and your friend coming round to mm -hmm. play games, couch co-op or split screen or whatever. Like you, I miss. I feel sorry for the new gen. You missed out on what I think was actually a golden age, but I'm sure they'll disagree. The new gen, I'm like, what? You don't have Fortnite? That sucks. Um, but yeah, this perception. But yeah, just sitting physically with your friends. Oh, amazing feeling. Uh, Hoggy Chani, thank you so much for the $5 super. She goes, DirectX 12 direct storage requires NVMe storage. Games can have that as a minimum requirement. Well, how I will be very glad when the PC... Oh, I'm not glad, but... I think the PC, when the PCs state a minimum SSD requirement, we've well and truly moved into next gen. How long will that what? take though? I don't know. The yeah. SSD has nothing to do with full next gen. It's a, it's you like, go. I'm, you want to I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's what do you mean? In, on the PC space, when would it be? The move the next gen in the PC space. The next, the next gen, the saying truly next gen is a fallacy. It's are you? Uh, no, I've well, coach. So you don't I think, played. You, you don't think we're next gen right now, coach? Well, I, I think we were in next gen when I played Red Dead Redemption Two in 2018. Like it's one of the best looking okay. games ever. Like what I'm, is next gen? I would like, tell you what, what. I would tell you what next gen was for me. Because this All is, right. if you, in totality. Next gen has always been here because if you had a PC, you was able to do all this stuff a long time ago. But I always sure. I always put it as a console base. Like the one thing I told everybody uh, when these systems came out, I said.
the true next gen for you guys is the experience of performance performance being untethered and you being able to play games that people that's been playing games for the last 15 20 years on pc has been you know being able to see what 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second looks like on a console being having your games load at us at a at a at a pace where you didn't have to you couldn't just go to the bathroom and come back and the game is still loading i think yeah, that yeah. was that was the experience of what next gen for these for this generation is because that, that SS- 60 frames yeah that ssd yeah. The 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 frames per second because think about it for a long time all that generation people say I don't need thirty frames per second what's that I mean I don't need sixty frames per second I'm good with thirty and then guess what all of these people they finally see what sixty frames and one twenty and a faster SSD is they're like how was I playing games yeah. because your eyes are open now now next generation whatever the next generation is going to be I agree with you coat. What is that going to look like? Because now we have the performance, we have the graphical fidelity. What is next for us when it comes to the um, to what the next generation is going to bring? And I think that's a harder thing because graphics ain't going to be it. That's not enough. I think it has to I be the- gameplay at that point, or it has to be systems in place when it comes to like more <laughs> enemies and stuff on the screen. And you know, being we're kind of at diminishing returns. Like I know Asa would would line up with us on this pretty well. Like when I think about next generation, was to jump from the Xbox original and the PS2 to the 360 and 360 uh, PS3, where well, I've said this before, how games felt big, they looked big, they the graphics were great, the worlds were more immersive, the when you were in cutscenes, the cutscene to gameplay were more in line with each other. You didn't get that on an Xbox original. The games were like, you know, in comparison. Oh so I felt really felt the jump. Yeah. What's I'm that? About to, I was about to tell you that your camera's about to die. In my ca- you keep talking. Sorry. Oh. I'll change my battery. Oh, oh, gases. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a major difference between um, the, the way games felt on the Xbox original to, to a, a year or two into the or maybe a year into the 360, but we we kind of we got into the Xbox One and the PS4, and games just looked like better 360 games for a little while, and you know it right. just takes a while. Things are always getting better, and to to that credit of what I've just said, games are always really incredibly amazing for yeah. the most part. Most games I play, I'm super happy with the way games look and feel. Like you said, Forte, the jump to 60 frames is a major major difference that you just really couldn't get on over half of your games on the xbox one and the 360 era so yeah it's been i don't know people just say that doesn't look next gen do you hear people say asa where they look at a game there they look at a trailer hmm that doesn't look next gen Right. I want to hear your hear opinion it. on I, that. I, yeah, I, but what do you think about that, Asa? That's we definitely want to hear your point on it. I, <laughs> yeah, I agree with Colt. If you're looking purely from a graphical perspective, that there isn't such a clear dividing line between previous gen and next gen, but that's always been the most scalable element. I disagree that mm-hmm. the SSD isn't pivotal to next gen. So the SSD and the processors yes. in these new consoles. <laughs> <laughs> we're not at a point yet where those become the baseline so everything from a design yeah. perspective is still made for essentially the xbox one and we are moving into this weird space where actually in some senses the pc is going to bottleneck what we're getting because pcs don't have a high enough adoption rate for ssds so games are still mm-hmm. going to be made to run off of a mechanical hard drive much as there are like the medium is a good example the medium came out on the xbox and they said we can only do these two realities because of the ssd in the in the xbox pc version ran off of a mechanical hard drive just fine because you have a load more memory available on a pc so it just loaded both realities at the same time same game same thing achieved but you look at for example spider-man um insomniac a while ago they did a tech demo of spider-man on the playstation 5 where they showed that in the place that in the game that they released there's a certain maximum speed if you've got a fully upgraded spider-man he can go x fast and that's as fast as they can stream in assets on that console stick the playstation ssd in there suddenly Spider-Man is actually able to go like 10 times as fast through the city. And that's an actual limitation caused by the hard drive. And so for me, when you talk about when are we going to see true next gen games, if you're using the consoles as the basis of what a generation is, which is debatable, like obviously things are very different in PC space and Mm -hmm. consoles are just one little bubble over there. Um, But when you start using new technologies properly, when you start using all the stuff that's packed into an nvidia card the direct storage and things like that that you've got on amd and nvidia ssds and proper processors like we've got in these consoles now games should 
be designed to be something very different to what we're used to. And it goes beyond what the reflections look like because that's that's not it. You're right. That's not next gen. But games can go further and they will. Yeah, yeah, that's so. a good point. That's a very good yeah, point. That's, that's where I'm coming from, what Asa said. Is the baseline changes to SSD and catering for that, forget last gen consoles. PC is the baseline. That SSD, we've had Sony were saying, a lot of devs were saying, you know when the run-up to the launch of next-gen consoles, everyone was like, the PlayStation 5 SSD is the game changer because, you know, it's twice as fast. Game development will change fundamentally, but completely discounting the fact that the, their PlayStation is going to be hindered by PCs, not the Series S that has an SSD and a next-gen CPU, but PCs. And that's why I point to the PC development. That's going to be maybe another gen, I assume, to right. when we see that baseline. Um, but yeah, so let's let, let's see what happens there. Let me read the... Uh, so there's a massive tangent, but it was very interesting chat. Um, Dead Planet, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Sony's bread and butter is their software sales. Is it that crazy to imagine a future where they are the ones to ditch consoles and go third party? It's not that crazy. King David would be celebrating in the streets and I would buy a first class ticket to wherever the hell he is just so we can make a video where we laugh at that becoming a reality. But um, I don't think it's that crazy. Um, and so the reason the game industry is shifting monumentally um, what we constitute, you know, like services of the future, the metaverse narrative, if you believe it, what does all that mean? I don't think so. It's not crazy at all, Dead Planet. Absolutely not. Uh, King David certainly thinks it's going to be soon. In fact, next gen, I'll say soon. Um, but yeah, let's see. I mean... That could apply to anyone, though. Um, Games Lord, thank you for the HOK10. What about third-party, high-budget, single-player, non-live service games? Uh, like I said, see something like Apex Legends when it comes to EA and how they're still making a game like Star Wars Survivor. Yeah. That's a single-player game. It, it's... Yeah. It just comes down to them wanting to do it. And, you know, some developers will tend to fall back on the side of we just want all our stuff to be live service like kind of like e like uh ubisoft is doing at this point now when it comes to a lot of their games and you have the other opposite of that as long as there is a reason for people to buy those games they will continue to keep making them yeah definitely hey, games lord again with asia k10 says i can't see the difference between my th th between 30 and 60 for some reason uh, no, I mean, I envy you. I your superior I eyes. Congratulations. I envy you. <laughs> yeah. His eyes automatically upscale to 60. You lucky, lucky person. Um, Shabs yeah. inevitable with the five pound super chat. Goes, Thank you so much, Shabs. It goes, eighth gen Intel or second gen Ryzen. And at the very latest 2025 when Windows 10 expires. What? What is he talking about? Uh, next probably gen. An when next gen when, is yeah, official. when next gen things will be around. Um, Shabs, I don't think game developers are particularly care for Windows versions. They're, they're quite happily developing for Windows 7 still, apart from the DirectX 12 requirements. But yeah. That's what the Windows thing threw me off. Um, so, yeah, we've talked a lot about... Oh, that was a huge tangent, but it was interesting about, like, quite naturally came up. Do we talk about what's happening next week? I think it'd be crazy for us not to, but we've been on over two and a half hours Perhaps, chat, it's better for us to talk about it on the eve of the showing. I think that's where we're going to talk. Because otherwise, it's going to be a repeat. Unless something crazy happens on Monday. We're going to talk about the same things twice. It makes no yeah. sense. Why don't we just park it to next week? Where the energy will be flying through the roofs. We don't double dip like Sony uh, on the same <laughs> topics. <laughs> and we get saucy in the chat. So, yeah, this has been, this has gone on for quite a long time, but it's been great chat. There's been console warring. There's been Acer talking about stuff <laughs> that I'm trying to understand. And it's just been great chat. Honestly, thank you to everyone who came into the chat. Thank you for all the generous super chats. Thank you to Shabs for uh, gifting memberships uh, and 
these two gents. Forte, this is why I come back. Thank you so much for being here, man. I hope you had a good time. You oh, killed yeah. it as always, brother. What's in store for the Forte fans? No, oh, man, I appreciate it, man. It's always good to be here. Like I said, left work. I was like, oh, good reason to leave work early. Go hang out with Gas and Asa and, 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 and my man Co. Really appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, just working on a bunch of stuff for the channel, like around Xbox PlayStation predictions, stuff like that. Uh, we got DPS podcast coming up this week on my channel, Thursday, 9 p.m. Make sure you come through and check that out. Really, really cool. Um just really cool vibe that we'd be having over there. And it's really, really good. Um, but outside of that, Gaming Forte everywhere, YouTube, Twitter, Xbox Live, and PlayStation. And um, make sure you enjoy the games that you're playing and um, have a good week. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out oh. to you. Can't wait to see your content. Yeah, definitely. I thought you were going to say something. Uh, oh, no, I was going to say, um, I didn't notice until I saw it. Um, I hate I hate Madden football because uh, it's the same every year. But anybody that um, loved John Madden, this is the year that he's going to be on the cover of it. So, uh, you know, rest in peace, John Madden. If um, you're a Madden fan and you play the game, make sure you go out and buy a physical copy of the game so you can have a case of that man sitting on your counter. Don't buy it digitally because that could disappear. Buy a case because uh, I'll definitely be buying Madden for the first time. It feels like six years because he's on the cover of it. So they just announced it yesterday and I just saw it. Okay, cool. Um yeah, forgive me. I don't know. We, you don't know nothing. Football. Yeah, you don't know American <laughs> football. Yeah, yeah. I was like, who? Real? Uh, I know John Madden, the name, but I didn't he's know playing was, again. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I Sorry, you played again. I'm allowed to again. be ignorant of that because <laughs> no, I have no idea about American football. Good. Last but certainly not least is the man wearing that very good sky blue <laughs> shirt who has been making it dank. It's always natural to have. This is why it's such a good chat. Both good friends who are on party chat playing, but you, Colt, you are a source master. Tell our fans what you're up to. You're going to be, well, you're going to be flying jet setting next week yeah. to the show. Ooh, exciting times. What are you expect? You're going to see our boy Hargy. You're going to meet him there. Yeah, I'm going to meet Hargy. I'm going to meet Dante Moody, who's in the chat a lot. Dark CMF, who always tells you it's your birthday. Dark and, CMF, um, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's going to be really great. Oh, uh, Sean Labrie. Yeah, it won't be as big as uh, it was three years ago, but I'm really looking forward to it. I'm super nervous. I'm really, really, really nervous because um, why? I don't. Unless you're presenting something, why would you be? Nervous? I'm trying to tell you, man. He, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to tell you, man. That, the last time, the last time somebody from this community went out no. to Xbox, uh, was, I'm just was Paris. I'm just, I'm just nervous. And we all because... saw what Paris ended up doing. You. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it goes well. I, I, you know, it's just, I was there in 2019, and that was one of their lowest E3s, and I had a really good time at the show, and my podcast buddies back home were ripping the show to, thread, or to, to shreds and um, really ruined my excellent weekend of being out in L.A., <laughs> Like, I know exactly I know. what messages to send you. E3 showcase sucked. <laughs> Cole, don't have fun. <laughs> yeah, it was like, how can you sit there in person at that event? I'm like, anyway, I hope it goes nah. well. I'm expecting, oh. I'm, I'm expecting good things. And uh, no, this yeah. face is is not going to be uh, in fame. On no, come on now, look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm Stop a. Stop it! Don't self. I'm a paid chill. What? Self deprecation is not flattering, sir. Self deprecation is not flattering. Yeah. <laughs> Can be. But it's not. Someday. No, you, Some, yeah. Someday. 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 It has to be sure. We can, short. We can Soon. If it's not this year, it has to be next year. This man made shirts for Xbox before, man. Come on. Mm. No. <laughs> I just want to enjoy the I just want to enjoy the trip and um I'm going to be back in time for Gaz and I to do the show. I think we've got, well, I think we've got special Nick on with us on Monday night, oh, the really? night after the show. Know. So I'm not even making content while I'm there. I'm not. I'm not going live after the show. I'm not on anybody's podcast. We're just gonna going to enjoy the festivities. So I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I'm nervous. It's gonna be a, be gonna be a trip. What, it's gonna be. 
an epic show. I think it's going to be good. I am hearing from Tim Dog. It's going to be all hands on deck. We're going to be talking about next week, where it's one week away, eight days away, whatever. It's so close. So close. Ace is excited. Ace is thinking, Gaz, you've forgotten. No, I haven't, sir. Tell our, 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 your fans where they can find you I and what you're going really, to do Really, I dislike next. that. I don't have fans. Um, I tell my friends I'm going to be on YouTube a lot. I've Only moved fans. all my streaming over from Twitch to... No, <laughs> I've moved all my streaming over from Twitch to YouTube. So they're quite a bit. Why? Playing some games on the treadmill. Why? Many reasons that I won't go into now because... <laughs> it won't be that interesting for a lot of people but if you have time please do just check out my channel as well give me a little subscribe there i do a little loan show where some people come on here and they say you don't talk enough you need to talk more so i talk for like 90 minutes on a thursday um as well as playing some games on there and things like that on the treadmill so please do swing by and check that out um and yeah it's like time for summer game fest and the xbox show and all the rest of it so exciting week ahead absolutely absolutely thank you everyone chat please do check out gameondaily.com in terms of giveaways <clears throat> we did get a few comments but the reason why we parked away doing the free ga game giveaway a week other than the fact that we broke <laughs> is the fact that we're doing a tuesday um show uh, that we talked about a while ago but it's going to be a while in the making as the planning stage comes in it's going to be a great show that i promise you it's nothing like it nothing like it uh in the space but really do i'm very grateful so uh, thank you so much for the support if you can and you did enjoy the show please smash that like button it does really help us out a lot playstation or xbox fan don't get you know console warring in the source just enjoy it and in the spirit that it's meant to be death and war no just just fun and games that's all we are um we hope you to see you next week hopefully have more videos i still need to work on hoggate's video but i will see you next week take care it's gonna be a mad one Bye -bye.